Life is a Dream by Pedro Calderón de la Barca Introduction Two of the dramas contained in this volume are the most celebrated of all Calderón's writings. The first, La Vida y es Sueno, has been translated into many languages and performed with success on almost every stage in Europe but that of England. So late as the winter of 1866-7, in a Russian version, it drew crowded houses to the great theater of Moscow. While a few years earlier, as if to give a signal proof of the reality of its title, and that life was indeed a dream, the Queen of Sweden expired in the theater of Stockholm during the performance of La Vida y es Sueno. In England the play has been much studied for its literary value and the exceeding beauty and lyrical sweetness of some passages. But with the exception of a version by John Oxenford published in The Monthly Magazine for 1842, which being in blank verse does not represent the form of the original, no complete translation into English has been attempted. Some scenes translated with considerable elegance in the meter of the original were published by Archbishop Trench in 1856, but these comprised only a portion of the graver division of the drama. The present version of the entire play has been made with the advantages which the author's long experience in the study and interpretation of Calderon has enabled him to apply to this masterpiece of the great Spanish poet. All the forms of verse have been preserved. While the closeness of the translation may be inferred from the fact, that not only the whole play but every speech and fragment of a speech are represented in English in the exact number of lines of the original, without the sacrifice. It is to be hoped, of one important idea. A note by Hartzenbusch in the last edition of the drama published at Madrid, 1872, tells that La Vida y es Sueno is founded on a story which turns out to be substantially the same as that with which English students are familiar as the foundation of the famous induction to the Taming of the Shrew. Calderon found it however in a different work from that in which Shakespeare met with it, or rather his predecessor, the anonymous author of The Taming of a Shrew, whose work supplied to Shakespeare the materials of his own comedy. On this subject Malone thus writes. The circumstance on which the induction to the anonymous play, as well as to the present comedy, Shakespeare's Taming of the Shrew, is founded, is related, as Langbane has observed, by Huterus, Rerum Bergen, Lib. 4. The earliest English original of this story in prose that I have met with is the following, which is found in Goulart's Admirable and Memorable Histories, translated by E. Grimstone, Quarto, 1607. But this tale, which Goulart translated from Huterus, had undoubtedly appeared in English, in some other shape, before 1594. Philip called the good Duke of Burgundy, in the memory of our ancestors, being at Bruxelles with his court and walking one night after supper through the streets, accompanied by some of his favorites, he found lying upon the stones a certain artisan that was very drunk, and that slept soundly. It pleased the prince in this artisan to make trial of the vanity of our life, whereof he had before discoursed with his familiar friends. He therefore caused this sleeper to be taken up, and carried into his palace. He commands him to be laid in one of the richest beds, a riche night cap to be given him, his full a shirt to be taken off, and to have another put on him of fine holland. When as this drunkard had digested his wine, and began to awake, behold there comes about his bed pages and grooms of the duke's chamber, who draw the courtesans, make many courtesies, and being bareheaded, ask him if it please him to rise. And what apparel it would please him to put on that day. They bring him rich apparel. This new monsieur amazed at such courtesy, and doubting whether he dreamt or waked, suffered himself to be drayest, and led out of the chamber. There came noblemen which saluted him with all honor, and conduct him to the mass, where with great ceremony they give him the book of the gospel, and the pigs to kiss, as they did usually to the duke. From the mass they bring him back unto the palace, he washes his hands, and sits down at the table well furnished. After dinner, the great chamberlain commands cards to be brought with a great summy of money. This duke in imagination plays with the chief of the court. Then they carry him to walk in the guardian, and to hunt the hare, and to hawk. They bring him back into the palace, where he sups in state. Candles being light the musicians begin to play, and the tables taken away, the gentlemen and gentlewomen fell to dancing. Then they played a pleasant comedy, 
after which followed a banquet, whereat they had presently store of epulchres and precious wine, with all sorts of confitures, to this prince of the new impression, so as he was drunk, and fell sound lie asleep. Hereupon the duke commanded that he should be disrobed of all his riche attire. He was put into his old rags, and carried into the same place, where he had been found the night before, where he spent that night. Being awake in the morning, he began to remember what had happened before, he knew not whether it were true indeed, or a dream that had troubled his brain. But in the end, after many discourses, he concludes that all was but a dream that had happened unto him, and so entertained his wife, his children, and his neighbors, without any other apprehension. It is curious to find that the same anecdote which formed the induction to the original, Taming of a Shrew, and which, from a comic point of view, Shakespeare so wonderfully developed in his own comedy. Calderon invested with such solemn and sublime dignity in La Vida y es Sueno. He found it, as Senor Hartzenbusch points out in the edition of 1872 already quoted, in the very amusing Viage Entretenido of Augustine de Rojas, which was first published in 1603. Hartzenbusch refers to the modern edition of Rojas, Madrid, 1793, Tomo I, pages 261, 262, 263, but in a copy of the Lerida edition of 1615, in my own possession, I find the anecdote at folios 118, 119, 120. There are some slight differences between the version of Rojas and that of Goulart, but the incidents and the persons are the same. The conclusion to which the artisan arrived at, in the version of Goulart, that all had been a dream, is expressed more strongly by the duke himself in the story as told by Rojas. Why Dijo entonces el duque, vis aqui, amigos, lo que es el mundo, te do es un sueno, pues esto verdaderment ha pasado por este, como habeas visto, y lo paris que lo ha senado. The story in all probability came originally from the East. Mr. Lane in his translation of The Thousand and One Nights gives a very interesting narrative which he believes to be founded on an historical fact in which Haroun al-Raskid plays the part of the good Duke of Burgundy. And Abu el Hassan the original of Christopher Sly. The gravity of the treatment and certain incidents in this oriental story recall more strongly Calderon's drama than the induction to the Taming of the Shrew. La Vida y es Sueno was first published either at the end of 1635 or beginning of 1636. The approbation for its publication along with eleven other dramas, not nine as Archbishop Trench has stated, was signed on the 6th of November in the former year by the official licensor, Juan Bautista de Sasa. The volume was edited by the poet's brother, Don Joseph Calderon. So scarce has this first authorized collection of any of Calderon's dramas become, that a Spanish writer Don Vicente Garcia de la Huerta, in his Teatro Español, Part Segunda, Tomo 30, denies the existence of this volume of 1635, and states that it did not appear until 1640. As if to corroborate this view, Barrera in his Catalogo del Teatro Antiguo Español, gives the date 1640 to the Primera Part de Comedias de Calderon edited by his brother Joseph. There can be no doubt, however, that the volume appeared in 1635 or 1636 as stated. In 1637 Don Joseph Calderon published the second part of his brother's dramas containing like the former volume 12 plays. One in his dedication of this volume to D. Rodrigo de Mendoza, Joseph Calderon expressly alludes to the first part of his brother's comedies which he had printed. En la primera part, excelentissimo señor, de las comedias que imprimi de Don Pedro Calderon de la Barca, mi hermano, etc. This of course settles the fact of the prior publication of the first part. It is singular, however, to find that the most famous of all Calderon's dramas should have been frequently ascribed to Lope de Vega. So late as 1857 it is given in an Italian version by Giovanni La Cecilia, under the title of La Vida e Unsogno, as a drama of Lope de Vega, with the date 1628. This of course is a mistake, but Senor Hartzenbusch, who makes no allusion to this circumstance, admits that two dramas of Lope de Vega. 
which it is presumed preceded the composition of Calderon's play turn on very nearly the same incidents as those of La Vida y es Sueno. These are Lo que ha de ser, and Barlon y Josafa. He gives a passage from each of these dramas which seem to be the germ of the fine lament of Sigismund, which the reader will find translated in the present volume. Senor Hartzenbusch, in the edition of Calderon's La Vida y es Sueno, already referred to, Madrid, 1872, prints the passages from Lope de Vega's two dramas, but in neither of them, he justly remarks. Can we find anything that at all corresponds to this grandioso character de Segismundo? The second drama in this volume, The Wonderful Magician, is perhaps better known to poetical students in England than even the first, from the spirited fragment Shelley has left us in his Scenes from Calderon. The preoccupation of a subject by a great master throws immense difficulties in the way of anyone who ventures to follow in the same path, but as Shelley allowed himself great license in his versification. And either from carelessness or an imperfect knowledge of Spanish is occasionally unfaithful to the meaning of his author. It may be hoped in my own version that strict fidelity both as to the form as well as substance of the original may be some compensation for the absence of those higher poetical harmonies to which many of my readers will have been accustomed. El Magico Prodigioso appeared for the first time in the same volume as La Vida y es Sueno, prepared for publication in 1635 by Don Joseph Calderon. The translation is comprised in the same number of lines as the original, and all the preceding remarks on Life is a Dream, whether in reference to the period of the first publication of the drama in Spain, or the principles I kept in view while attempting this version may be applied to it. As in the case of Life is a Dream, the wonderful magician has previously been translated entire by an English writer, Justina, by J. H. 1848. But as Archbishop Trench truly observes, the writer did not possess that command of the resources of the English language, which none more than Calderon requires. The legend on which Calderon founded El Magico Prodigioso will be found in Surius, the Probatus Sanctorum Historius, T. V., Colonel A. G. R. 1574, page 351, Vita E. T. Martyrium S. S. Cipriani E. T. Justini, Autor Simeone metaphrased, and in Chapter Xlii, of the Legenda Aurea of Jacobus de Voragine de Sancta Justina Virgin. The martyrdom of the saints took place in the year 290, and their festival is celebrated by the Church on the 26th of September. Mr. Ticknor in his History of Spanish Literature, 1863, Volume 2. p. 369, says that the wonder-working magician is founded on the same legend on which Milman has founded his Martyr of Antioch. This is a mistake of the learned writer. The Martyr of Antioch is founded not on the history of St. Justina but of St. Margaret, as Milman himself expressly states. Chapter 93, De Sancta Margarita, in the Legenda Aurea of Jacobus de Voragine contains her story. The third translation in this volume is that of The Purgatory of St. Patrick. This, though perhaps not so famous as the two preceding dramas, is intended to be given by Don P. De La Escosura, in a selection of Calderon's finest, Comedias, now being edited by him for the Spanish Academy, as the representative piece of its class, namely, the mystical drama founded on the lives of saints. Mr. Ticknor prefers it to the more celebrated Devotion of the Cross, and says that it is commonly ranked among the best religious plays of the Spanish theatre in the 17th century. In all that relates to the famous cave known through the Middle Ages as the Purgatory of St. Patrick. As well as the story of Luis Aeneas, the Owain Miles of ancient English poetry, Calderon was entirely indebted to the little volume published at Madrid, in 1627, by Juan Pérez de Montalvan entitled Vida y Purgatorio de San Patricio. This singular work met with immense success. It went through innumerable editions, and continues to be reprinted in Spain as a chapbook, down to the present day. I have the fifth impression, improved and enlarged by the author himself, Madrid, 1628, the year after its first appearance, also a later edition, Madrid, 1664. As early as 1637 a French translation appeared at Brussels by F. A. S. 
Chartreux, a Bruxelles. In 1642 a second French translation was published at Troyes, by, R. P. François Bouillon, de l'Ordre de S. François, et de Bachelier de Theology. Mr. Thomas Wright in his Essay on St. Patrick's Purgatory, London, 1844, makes the singular mistake of supposing that Bouillon's Histoire de la vie et Purtory de S. Patrice was founded on the drama of Calderon, it being simply a translation of Montalvan's Vita y Purgatorio, from which, like itself, Calderon's play was derived. Among other translations of Montalvan's work may be mentioned one in Dutch, Brussels, 1668, and one in Portuguese, Lisbon, 1738. It was also translated into German and Italian, but I find no mention of an English version. For this reason I have thought that a few extracts might be interesting, as showing how closely Calderon adhered even to the language of his predecessor. In all that relates to the purgatory, Montalvan's work is itself chiefly compiled from the Florilegium Insuli Sanctorum, Seu Vitae et Acti Sanctorum Hibernii, Paris, 1624, Fall. This work, which has now become scarce, was written by Thomas Messingham an Irish priest, the superior of the Irish seminary in Paris. No complete English version appears to have been made of it, but a small tract in English containing everything in the original work that referred to St. Patrick's Purgatory was published at Paris in 1718. As this tract is perhaps more scarce than even the Florilegium itself, the account of the purgatory as given by Messingham from the MS of Henry of Saltray is reprinted in the notes to this drama in the quaint language of the anonymous translator. Of this tract, printed at Paris in 1718, without the name of author, publisher, or printer, I have not been able to trace another copy. In other points of interest connected with Calderon's drama, particularly to the clearing up of the difficulty hitherto felt as to the confused list of authorities at the end, the reader is also referred to the notes. The present version of The Purgatory of St. Patrick is, with the exception of a few unimportant lines, an entirely new translation. It is made with the utmost care, imitating all the measures and contained, like the two preceding dramas, in the exact number of lines of the original. One passage of the translation which I published in 1853 is retained in the notes, as a tribute of respect to the memory of the late John Rutter Chorley. It having been mentioned with praise by that eminent Spanish scholar in an elaborate review of my earlier translations from Calderon, which appeared in the Athenaeum, November. 19 and November 26, 1853. It only remains to add that the text I have followed is that of Hartzenbusch in his edition of Calderon's Comedias, Madrid, 1856, Biblioteca de Autores Españoles. His arrangement of the scenes has been followed throughout, thus enabling the reader in a moment to verify for himself the exactness of the translation by a reference to the original, a crucial test which I rather invite than decline. Clapham Park, Easter, 1873. How do you find this book? Any thoughts about the book or the author? Any suggestion for improvement? Please take a moment to share your thoughts in a comment. If you like it, share it with your friends who might enjoy it as well. Subscribe to keep in touch. Visit completeaudiobooks.com for more quality content. Persons Basilius, King of Poland Sigismund, his son Astolfo, Duke of Muscovy Clotaldo, a nobleman. Estrella, a princess. Rosara, a lady. Claren, her servant. Soldiers. Guards. Musicians. Attendants. Ladies. Servants. The scene is in the court of Poland, in a fortress at some distance, and in the open field. Act the First. At one side a craggy mountain, at the other a tower, the lower part of which serves as the prison of Sigismund. The door facing the spectators is half open. The action commences at nightfall. Scene 1. Rosara, Claren. Rosara in man's attire appears on the rocky heights and descends to the plain. She is followed by Claren. Rosara, wild hippogriff swift speeding. Thou that dost run, the winged winds exceeding. 
bolt which no flash illumes. Fish without scales, bird without shifting plumes. And brood a while bereft. Of natural instinct. Why to this wild cleft? This labyrinth of naked rocks, dost sweep. Unrained, uncurbed, to plunge thee down the steep. Stay in this mountain wold. And let the beasts their phaeton behold. For I, without a guide. Save what the laws of destiny decide. Benighted, desperate, blind. Take any path whatever that doth wind. Down this rough mountain to its base. Whose wrinkled brow in heaven frowns in the sun's bright face. Ah, Poland. In ill mood. Hast thou received a stranger, since in blood. The name thou writest on thy sands. Of her who hardly here fares hardly at thy hands. My fate may well say so. But where shall one poor wretch find pity in her woe? Claren, say too, if you please. Don't leave me out when making plaints like these. For if we are the two. Who left our native country with the view. Of seeking strange adventures, if we be. The two who, madly and in misery. Have got so far as this, and if we still. Are the same two who tumbled down this hill. Does it not plainly to a wrong amount? To put me in the pain and not in the account? Rosara, I do not wish to impart. Claren, to thee, the sorrows of my heart. Mourning for thee would spoil the consolation. Of making for thyself thy lamentation. For there is such a pleasure in complaining. That a philosopher I've heard maintaining. One ought to seek a sorrow and be vain of it in order to be privileged to complain of it. Claren, that same philosopher, was an old drunken fool, unless I err. Oh, that I could a thousand thumps present him, in order for complaining to content him. But what, my lady, say, are we to do, on foot, alone, our way? Lost in the shades of night? For see, the sun descends another sphere to light. Rosara, so strange a misadventure who has seen. But if my sight deceives me not, between. These rugged rocks, half lit by the moon's ray. And the declining day. It seems, or is it fancy. That I see. A human dwelling. Claren, so it seems to me. Unless my wish the long for lodging mocks. Rosara, a rustic little palace, mid the rocks. Uplifts its lowly roof. Scarce seen by the far sun that shines aloof. Of such a rude device. Is the whole structure of this edifice. That lying at the feet. Of these gigantic crags that rise to greet. The sun's first beams of gold. It seems a rock that down the mountain rolled. Claren, let us approach more near. For long enough we've looked at it from here. Then better we shall see. If those who dwell therein will generously. A welcome give us. Rosara, see an open door. Funereal mouth, t'were best the name it bore. From which as from a womb. The night is born, engendered in its gloom. The sound of chains is heard within. Claren, heavens. What is this I hear? Rosara, half ice, half fire, I stand transfixed with fear. Claren, a sound of chains, is it not? Some galley slave his sentence here hath got. My fear may well suggest it so may be. Scene 2. Sigismund, in the tower. Rosara, Claren. Sigismund, within, alas. Ah, wretched me. Ah, wretched me. Rosara, oh what a mournful wail. Again my pains, again my fears prevail. Claren, again with fear I die. Rosara, Claren. Claren, my lady. Rosara, let us turn and fly. The risks of this enchanted tower. Claren, 4-1. I scarce have strength to stand, much less to run. Rosara, is not that glimmer there afar? That dying exhalation, that pale star. A tiny taper, which, with trembling blaze, 
flickering, twixt struggling flames and dying rays. With ineffectual spark. Makes the dark dwelling place appear more dark. Yes, for its distant light. Reflected dimly, brings before my sight. A dungeon's awful gloom. Say rather of a living course, a living tomb. And to increase my terror and surprise. Dreyest in the skins of beasts a man there lies. A piteous sight. Chained, and his sole companion this poor light. Since then we cannot fly. Let us attentive to his words draw nigh. Whatever they may be. The doors of the tower open wide, and Sigismund is discovered in chains and clad in the skins of beasts. The light in the tower increases. Sigismund, alas! Ah, wretched me! Ah, wretched me! Heaven, here lying all forlorn! I desire from thee to know. Since thou thus dost treat me so, why have I provoked thy scorn? By the crime of being born? Though for being born I feel. Heaven with me must harshly deal. Since man's greatest crime on earth. Is the fatal fact of birth. Sin supreme without appeal. This alone I ponder o'er. My strange mystery to pierce through. Leaving wholly out of view. Germs my hapless birthday bore. How have I offended more? That the more you punish me? Must not other creatures be? Born? If born, what privilege? Can they over me allege? Of which I should not be free? Birds are born, the bird that sings. Richly robed by nature's dower. Scarcely floats, a feathered flower. Or a bunch of blooms with wings. When to heaven's high halls it springs. Cuts the blue air fast and free. And no longer bound will be. By the nest secure control. And with so much more of soul. Must I have less liberty? Beasts are born, the beast whose skin. Dappled o'er with beauteous spots. As when the great pencil dots. Heaven with stars, doth scarce begin. From its impulses within. Nature's stern necessity. To be schooled in cruelty. Monster. Waging ruthless war. And with instincts better far. Must I have less liberty? Fish are born, the spawn that breeds. Where the oozy seaweeds float. Scarce perceives itself a boat. Scaled and plated for its needs. When from wave to wave it speeds. Measuring all the mighty sea. Testing its profundity. To its depths so dark and chill. And with so much freer will. Must I have less liberty? Streams are born, a coiled up snake. When its path the streamlet finds. Scarce a silver serpent wins. Mong the flowers it must forsake. But a song of praise doth wake. Mournful though its music be. To the plain that courteously. Opes a path through which it flies. And with life that never dies. Must I have less liberty? When I think of this I start. Etna like in wild unrest. I would pluck from out my breast. Bit by bit my burning heart. For what law can so depart? From all right. As to deny. One lone man that liberty. That sweet gift which God bestows. On the crystal stream that flows. Birds and fish that float or fly. Rosara, fear and deepest sympathy. Do I feel at every word. Sigismund, who my sad lament has heard. What? Clotaldo. Claren, aside to his mistress, say, tis he. Rosara, no, tis but a wretch, ah, me. Who in these dark caves and cold. Here's the tale your lips unfold. Sigismund, then you'll die for listening so. That you may not know I know. That you know the tale I told. Seizes her. Yes, you'll die for loitering near. In these strong arms gaunt and grim. I will tear you limb from limb. Claren, I am deaf and couldn't hear. No. Rosara, 
if human heart you bear. Tis enough that I prostrate me. At thy feet, to liberate me. Sigismund, strange thy voice can so unbend me. Strange thy sight can so suspend me. And respect so penetrate me. Who art thou? For though I see. Little from this lonely room. This, my cradle and my tomb. Being all the world to me. And if birthday it could be. Since my birthday I have known. But this desert wild and lone. Where throughout my life's sad course. I have lived, a breathing course. I have moved, a skeleton. And though I address or see. Never but one man alone. Who my sorrows all hath known. And through whom have come to me. Notions of earth, sky, and sea. And though harrowing thee again. Since thou elt call me in this den. Monster fit for bestial feasts. I'm a man among wild beasts. And a wild beast amongst men. But though round me has been wrought. All this woe, from beasts I've learned. Polity, the same discerned. Heeding what the birds had taught. And have measured in my thought. The fair orbits of the spheres. You alone, midst doubts and fears. Wake my wonder and surprise. Give amazement to my eyes. Admiration to my ears. Every time your face I see. You produce a new amaze. After the most steadfast gaze. I again would gazer be. I believe some hydropsy. Must affect my sight, I think. Death must hover on the brink. Of those wells of light, your eyes. For I look with fresh surprise. And though death result, I drink. Let me see and die, forgive me. For I do not know, in faith. If to see you gives me death. What to see you not would give me. Something worse than death would grieve me. Anger, rage, corroding care. Death, but double death it were. Death with tenfold terrors rife. Since what gives the wretched life. Gives the happy death, despair. Rosara, thee to see wake such dismay. Thee to hear I so admire. That I'm powerless to inquire. That I know not what to say. Only this, that I today. Guided by a wiser will. Have here come to cure my ill. Here consoled my grief to see. If a wretch consoled can be. Seeing one more wretched still. Of a sage, who roamed dejected. Poor, and wretched, it is said. That one day, his wants being fed. By the herbs which he collected. Is there one, he thus reflected. Poorer than I am today. Turning round him to survey. He his answer got, detecting. A still poorer sage collecting. Even the leaves he threw away. Thus complaining to excess. Mourning fate, my life I led. And when thoughtlessly I said. To myself, does earth possess. One more steeped in wretchedness. I in thee the answer find. Since revolving in my mind. I perceive that all my pains. To become thy joyful gains. Thou hast gathered and entwined. And if haply some slight solace. By these pains may be imparted, too. Hear attentively the story. Of my life's supreme disasters. I am. Scene 3. Clotaldo, Soldiers, Sigismund, Rosara, Claren. Clotaldo, within, warders of this tower. Who, or sleeping or faint-hearted. Give an entrance to two persons. Who herein have burst a passage. Rosara, new confusion now I suffer. Sigismund, tis Clotaldo, who here guards me. Are not yet my miseries ended? Clotaldo, within, hasten hither, quick. Be active. And before they can defend them. Kill them on the spot, or capture. Voices within. Treason. Claren, watch guards of this tower. Who politely let us pass here. Since you have the choice of killing. 
or of capturing, choose the latter. Enter Clotaldo and soldiers, he with a pistol, and all with their faces covered. Clotaldo, aside to the soldiers, keep your faces all well covered. For it is a vital matter. That we should be known by no one. While I question these two stragglers. Claren, are there masqueraders here? Clotaldo, ye who in your ignorant rashness have passed through the bounds and limits of this interdicted valley, gainst the edict of the king, who has publicly commanded. None should dare descry the wonder that among these rocks is guarded. Yield at once your arms and lives, or this pistol, this cold aspic, formed of steel, the penetrating poison of two balls will scatter the report and fire of which will the air astound and startle. Sigismund, ere you wound them, ere you hurt them, will my life, O tyrant master, be the miserable victim of these wretched chains that clasp me, since in them, I vow to God, I will tear myself to fragments, with my hands, and with my teeth, in these rocks here, in these caverns, ere I yield to their misfortunes, or lament their sad disaster. Clotaldo, if you know that your misfortunes, Sigismund, are unexampled, since before being born you died, by heaven's mystical enactment. If you know these fetters are, of your furies oft so rampant, but the bridle that detains them, but the circle that contracts them, why these idle boasts? The door, to the soldiers, of this narrow prison fasten, leave him there secured. Sigismund, ah, heavens, it is wise of you to snatch me, thus from freedom, since my rage, gainst you have become titanic, since to break the glass and crystal, gold gates of the sun, my anger, on the firm fixed rock's foundations, would have mountains piled of marble. Clotaldo, tis that you should not so pile them, that perhaps these ills have happened. Some of the soldiers lead Sigismund into his prison, the doors of which are closed upon him. Scene 4 Rosara, Clotaldo, Clarin, soldiers. Rosara, since I now have seen how pride can offend thee, I were hardened. Sure in folly not here humbly. At thy feet for life to ask thee. Then to me extend thy pity. Since it were a special harshness. If humility and pride. Both alike were disregarded. Clarin, if humility and pride. Those two figures who have acted. Many and many a thousand times. In the, Otto's sacramentals. Do not move you, I, who am neither. Proud nor humble, but a sandwich. Partly mixed of both. Entreat you. To extend to us your pardon. Clotaldo, ho. Soldiers, my lord. Clotaldo, disarm the two. And their eyes securely bandage. So that they may not be able. To see whither they are carried. Rosara, this is, sir, my sword. To thee. Only would I wish to hand it. Since in fine of all the others. Thou art chief, and I could hardly. Yield it unto one less noble. Clarin, mine I'll give the greatest rascal. Of your troop, to a soldier, so take it, you. Rosara, and if I must die, to thank thee. For thy pity, I would leave thee. This as pledge, which has its value. From the owner who once wore it. That thou guard it well, I charge thee. For although I do not know. What strange secret it may carry. This I know, that some great mystery. Lies within this golden scabbard. Since relying but on it. I to Poland here have travelled. To revenge a wrong. Clotaldo, aside, just heavens. What is this? Still graver, darker. Grow my doubts and my confusion. My anxieties and my anguish. Speak, who gave you this? 
Rosara, a woman. Clotaldo, and her name. Rosara, to that my answer. Must be silence. Clotaldo, but from what? Do you now infer, or fancy, that this sword involves a secret? Rosara, she who gave it said, Depart hence. Into Poland, and by study. Stratagem, and skill so manage. That this sword may be inspected. By the nobles and the magnates. Of that land, for you, I know. Will by one of them be guarded. But his name. Lest he was dead. Was not then to me imparted. Clotaldo, aside, bless me, heaven. What's this I hear? For so strangely has this happened. That I cannot yet determine. If tis real or imagined. This is the same sword that I. Left with beauteous Violante. As a pledge unto its wearer. Who might seek me out thereafter. As a son that I would love him. And protect him as a father. What is to be done, ah, me. In confusion so entangled. If he who for safety bore it. Bears it now but to dispatch him. Since condemned to death he cometh. To my feet. How strange a marvel. What a lamentable fortune. How unstable. How unhappy. This must be my son, the tokens. All declare it, superadded. To the flutter of the heart. That to see him loudly rappeth. At the breast, and not being able. With its throbs to burst its chamber. Does as one in prison, who. Hearing tumult in the alley. Strives to look from out the window. Thus, not knowing what here passes. Save the noise, the heart uprusheth. To the eyes the cause to examine. They the windows of the heart. Out through which in tears it glances. What is to be done? O oh heavens! What is to be done? To drag him. Now before the king were death. But to hide him from my master. That I cannot do, according. To my duty as a vassal. Thus my loyalty and self-love. Upon either side attack me. Each would win. But wherefore doubt? Is not loyalty a grander? Nobler thing than life, than honor. Then let loyalty live, no matter. That he die. Besides, he told me. If I well recall his language. That he came to revenge a wrong. But a wronged man is a Lazar. No, he cannot be my son. Not the son of noble fathers. But if some great chance, which no one. Can be free from, should have happened. Since the delicate sense of honor. Is a thing so fine, so fragile. That the slightest touch may break it. Or the faintest breath may tarnish. What could he do more? Do more. He whose cheek the blue blood mantles. But at many risks to have come here. It again to re-establish. Yes, he is my son, my blood. Since he shows himself so manly. And thus then betwixt two doubts. A mid-course alone is granted. Tis to seek the king, and tell him. Who he is, let what will happen. A desire to save my honor. May appease my royal master. Should he spare his life, I then. Will assist him in demanding. His revenge, but if the king. Should, persisting in his anger. Give him death, then he will die. Without knowing I'm his father. To Rosara and Claren. Come, then, come then with me, strangers. Do not fear in your disasters. That you will not have companions. In misfortune, for so balanced. Are the gains of life or death. That I know not which are larger. Exeunt. Scene 5. A hall in the royal palace. Enter at one side Astolfo and soldiers, and at the other the Infanta. Estrella and her ladies. Military music and salutes within. Astolfo, struck at once with admiration. 
At thy starry eyes outshining. Mingle many a salutation. Drums and trumpet notes combining. Founts and birds in alternation. Wondering here to see thee pass. Music in grand chorus gathers. All her notes from grove and grass. Here are trumpets formed of feathers. There are birds that breathe in brass. All salute thee, fair Sonora. Ordnance as their queen proclaim thee. Beauteous birds as their aurora. As their palace trumpets name thee. And the sweet flowers as their flora. For aurora sure thou art. Bright as day that conquers night. Thine is Flora's peaceful part. Thou art palace in thy might. And as queen thou are you else my heart. Estrella, if the human voice obeying. Should with human action pair. Then you have said ill in saying. All these flattering words and fair. Since in truth they are gainsaying. This parade of victory. Gainst which I my standard rear. Since they say. It seems to me. Not the flatteries that I hear. But the rigors that I see. Think, too, what a base invention. From a wild beast's treachery sprung. Fraudful mother of dissension. Is to flatter with the tongue. And to kill with the intention. Astolfo, ill-informed you must have been. Fair Estrella, thus to throw. Doubt on my respectful mien. Let your ear attentive lean. While the cause I strive show. King Eustorgius the fair. Third so called, died leaving two. Daughters, and Basilius heir. Of his sisters I and you. Are the children, I forbear. To recall a single scene. Save what's needful. Chloraline. Your good mother and my aunt. Who is now a habitant. Of a sphere of sunnier sheen. Was the elder, of whom you. Are the daughter. Resasunda. Whom God guard a thousand years. Her fair sister, Rosamunda. Were she called if names were true. Wed in Muscovy, of whom. I was born. Tis needful now. The commencement to resume. King Basilius, who doth bow. Neath the weight of years, the doom. Age imposes, more inclined. To the studies of the mind. Than to women, wifeless, lone. Without sons, to fill his throne. I in you our way would find. You, the elder's child, averred. That the crown you stood more nigh. I, maintaining that you erred. Held, though born of the younger, I. Being a man, should be preferred. Thus our mutual pretension. To our uncle we related. Who replied that he would mention. Here, and on this day he stated. What might settle the dissension. With this end, from Muscovy. I set out, and with that view. I today fair Poland see. And not making war on you. Wait till war you make on me. Would to love, that God so wise. That the crowd may be assure. Astrologue to read the skies. And this festive true secure. Both to you and me the prize. Making you a queen, but queen. By my will. Our uncle leaving. You the throne will share between. And my love a realm receiving. Dearer than a king's domain. Estrella, well, I must be generous too. For a gallantry so fine. This imperial realm you view. If I wish it to be mine. Tis to give it unto you. Though if I the truth confessed. I must fear your love may fail. Flattering words are words at best. For perhaps a truer tale. Tells that portrait on your breast. Astolfo, on that point complete content. Will I give your mind, not here. For each sounding instrument. Drums are heard. Tells us that the king is near. With his court and parliament. Scene 6. The King Basilius, with his retinue. Astolfo, Estrella, ladies, soldiers. Estrella, learned Euclid. 
Astolfo, Thales Wise. Estrella, The Vast Zodiac. Astolfo, The Star Spaces. Estrella, Who Dost Soar To. Astolfo, Who Dost Rise. Estrella, The Sun's Orbit. Astolfo, The Star's Places. Estrella, To Describe. Astolfo, To Map the Skies. Estrella, Let Me Humbly Interlacing. Astolfo, Let Me Lovingly Embracing. Estrella, Be the Tendril of Thy Tree. Astolfo, Bend Respectfully My Knee. Basilius, Children, That Dear Word Displacing. Colder Names, My Arms Here Bless. And Be Sure, Since You Assented. To My Plan, My Love's Excess. Will Leave Neither Discontented. Or Give Either More or Less. And Though I From Being Old. Slowly may the facts unfold. Here in silence my narration. Keep reserved your admiration. Till the wondrous tale is told. You already know, I pray you. Be attentive, dearest children. 3. Great, illustrious court of Poland. Faithful vassals, friends and kinsmen. You already know, my studies. Have throughout the whole world given me. The high title of, the learned. Since, gainst time and time's oblivion. The rich pencils of Timanthes. The bright marbles of Lysippus. Universally proclaim me. Through earth's bounds the great Basilius. You already know the sciences. That I feel my mind most given to. Are the subtle mathematics. By whose means my clear provision. Takes from rumor its slow office. Takes from time its jurisdiction. Of, each day, new facts disclosing. Since in algebraic symbols. When the fate of future ages. On my tablets I see written. I anticipate time in telling. What my science hath predicted. All those circles of pure snow. All those canopies of crystal. Which the sun with rays illumines. Which the moon cuts in its circles. All those orbs of twinkling diamond. All those crystal globes that glisten. All that azure field of stars. Where the zodiac signs are pictured. Are the study of my life. Are the books where heaven has written. Upon diamond dotted paper. Upon leaves by sapphires tinted. With light luminous lines of gold. In clear characters distinctly. All the events of human life. Whether adverse or benignant. These so rapidly I read. That I follow with the quickness. Of my thoughts the swiftest movements. Of their orbits and their circles. Would to heaven, that ere my mind. To those mystic books addicted. Was the comment of their margins. And of all their leaves the index. Would to heaven, I say, my life had been offered the first victim of its anger that my deathstroke had in this way have been given me since the unhappy find even merit is the fatal knife that kills them and his own self-murderer is the man whom knowledge injures I may say so, but my story so will say with more distinctness and to win your admiration once again I pray you listen. Chloraline, my wife, a son. Bore me, so by fate afflicted. That on his unhappy birthday. All heaven's prodigies assisted. Nay, ere yet to life's sweet life. Gave him forth her womb, that living. Sepulchre, for death and life. Have like ending and beginning. Many a time his mother saw. In her dreams delirious dimness. From her side a monster break. Fashioned like a man. But sprinkled. With her blood, who gave her death. By that human viper bitten. Round his birthday came at last. All its auguries fulfilling. For the presages of evil. Seldom fail or even linger. Came with such a horoscope. That the sun rushed blood-red tinted. Into a terrific combat. 
with the dark moon that resisted. Earth its mighty lists outspread. As with lessening lights diminished. Strove the twin lamps of the sky. Twas of all the sun's eclipses. The most dreadful that it suffered. Since the hour its bloody visage. Wept the awful death of Christ. For o'erwhelmed in glowing cinders. The great orb appeared to suffer. Nature's final paroxysm. Gloom the glowing noontide darkened. Earthquake shook the mightiest buildings. Stones the angry clouds rained down. And with blood ran red the rivers. In this frenzy of the sun. In its madness and delirium. Sigismund was born, thus early. Giving proofs of his condition. Since his birth his mother slew. Just as if these words had killed her. I am a man. Since good with evil. I repay here from the beginning. I, applying to my studies. Saw in them as, twere forewritten. This, that Sigismund would be. The most cruel of all princes. Of all men the most audacious. Of all monarchs the most wicked. That his kingdom through his means. Would be broken and partitioned. The Academy of the Vices. And the High School of Sedition. And that he himself, born onward. By his crime's wild course resistless. Would even place his feet on me. For I saw myself down stricken. Lying on the ground before him. To say this what shame it gives me. While his feet on my white hairs. As a carpet were imprinted. Who discredits threatened ill. Specially and ill provisioned. By one study, when self-love. Makes it his peculiar business. Thus then crediting the fates. Which far off my science witnessed. All these fatal auguries. Seen though dimly in the distance. I resolved to chain the monster. That unhappily life was given to. To find out if yet the stars. Owned the wise man's weird dominion. It was publicly proclaimed. That the sad ill-omened infant. Was stillborn. I then a tower. Caused by forethought to be builded. Mid the rocks of these wild mountains. Where the sunlight scarce can gild it. Its glad entrance being barred. By these rude shafts obeliskal. All the laws of which you know. All the edicts that prohibit. Anyone on pain of death. That secluded part to visit. Of the mountain, were occasioned. By this cause, so long well hidden. There still lives Prince Sigismund. Miserable, poor, in prison. Him alone Claudaldo sees. Only tends to and speaks with him. He the sciences has taught him. He the Catholic religion. Has imparted to him, being. Of his miseries the sole witness. Here there are three things, the first. I rate highest, since my wishes. Are, O Poland, thee to save. From the oppression, the affliction. Of a tyrant king. Because. Of his country and his kingdom. He were no benignant father. Who to such a risk could give it. Secondly, the thought occurs. That to take from mine own issue. The plain right that every law. Human and divine hath given him. Is not Christian charity. For by no law am I bidden. To prevent another proving. Say, a tyrant, or a villain. To be one myself, supposing. Even my son should be so guilty. That he should not crimes commit. I myself should first commit them. Then the third and last point is. That perhaps I erred in giving. Too implicit a belief. To the facts foreseen so dimly. For although his inclination. Well might find its precipices. He might possibly escape them. For the fate the most fastidious. For the impulse the most powerful. Even the planets most malicious. Only make free will incline. But can force not human wishes. And thus, twist these different causes. Vacillating and unfixed. 
I a remedy have thought of. Which will with new wonder fill you. I tomorrow morning purpose. Without letting it be hinted. That he is my son, and therefore. Your true king, at once to fix him. As King Sigismund, for the name. Still he bears that first was given him. Neath my canopy, on my throne. And in fine in my position. There to govern and command you. Where in dutiful submission. You will swear to him allegiance. My resources thus are triple. As the causes of disquiet. Were which I revealed this instant. The first is. That he being prudent. Careful, cautious and benignant. Falsifying the wild actions. That of him had been predicted. You'll enjoy your natural prince. He who has so long been living. Holding court amid these mountains. With the wild beasts for his circle. Then my next resource is this. If he, daring, wild, and wicked. Proudly runs with loosened rein. O'er the broad plain of the vicious. I will have fulfilled the duty. Of my natural love and pity. Then his righteous deposition. Will but prove my royal firmness. Chastisement and not revenge. Leading him once more to the prison. My third course is this, the prince. Being what my words have pictured. From the love I owe you, vassals. I will give you other princes. Worthier of the crown and scepter. Namely, my two sisters' children. Who their separate pretensions. Having happily commingled. By the holy bonds of marriage. Will then fill their fit position. This is what a king commands you. This is what a father bids you. This is what a sage entreats you. This is what an old man wishes. And as Seneca, the Spaniard. Says, a king for all his riches. Is but slave of his republic. This is what a slave petitions. Astolfo, if on me devolves the answer. As being in this weighty business. The most interested party. I, of all, express the opinion. Let Prince Sigismund appear. He's thy son, that's all sufficient. All, give to us our natural prince. We proclaim him king this instant. Basilius, vassals, from my heart I thank you. For this deference to my wishes. Go, conduct to their apartments. These two columns of my kingdom. On tomorrow you shall see him. All, live, long live great King Basilius. Exeunt all, accompanying Estrella and Estolfo. The king remains. Scene 7 Clotaldo, Rosara, Clarin, and Basilius. Clotaldo, may I speak to you, sire? Basilius, Clotaldo. You are always welcome with me. Clotaldo, although coming to your feet. Shows how freely I'm admitted. Still, your majesty, this once. Fate as mournful as malicious. Takes from privilege its due right. And from custom its permission. Basilius, what has happened? Clotaldo, a misfortune. Sire, which has my heart afflicted. At the moment when all joy. Should have overflown and filled it. Basilius, pray proceed. Clotaldo, this handsome youth here. Inadvertently, or driven. By his daring, pierced the tower. And the prince discovered in it. Nay. Basilius, Clotaldo, be not troubled. At this act, which if committed. At another time had grieved me. But the secret so long hidden. Having myself told, his knowledge. Of the fact but matters little. See me presently, for I. Much must speak upon this business. And for me you much must do. For a part will be committed. To you in the strangest drama. That perhaps the world e'er witnessed. As for these, that you may know. That I mean not your remissness. To chastise, I grant their pardon. Exit. Clotaldo, myriad years to my lord be given. 
Scene 8. Clotaldo, Rosara, and Claren. Clotaldo, aside, heaven has sent a happier fate. Since I need not now admit it. I'll not say he is my son. Strangers who have wandered hither. You are free. Rosara, I give your feet. A thousand kisses. Claren, I say misses. For a letter more or less. Twixt two friends is not considered. Rosara, you have given me life, my lord. And since by your act I'm living. I eternally will own me. As your slave. Clotaldo, the life I've given. Is not really your true life. For a man by birth uplifted. If he suffers an affront. Actually no longer liveth. And supposing you have come here. For revenge as you have hinted. I have not then given you life. Since you have not brought it with you. For no life disgraced is life. Dot. Aside. This I say to arouse his spirit. Rosara, I confess I have it not. Though by you it has been given me. But revenge being wreaked, my honor. I will leave so pure and limpid. All its perils overcome. That my life may then with fitness. Seem to be a gift of yours. Clotaldo, take this burnished sword which hither. You brought with you, for I know. To revenge you, tis sufficient. In your enemy's blood bathed red. For a sword that once was girded. Round me, I say this the while. That to me it was committed. Will know how to write you. Rosara, thus. In your name once more I gird it. And on it my vengeance swear. Though the enemy who afflicts me. Were more powerful. Clotaldo, is he so? Rosara, yes. So powerful, I am hindered. Saying who he is, not doubting. Even for greater things your wisdom. And calm prudence, but through fear. Lest against me your prized pity. Might be turned. Clotaldo, twill rather be. By declaring it, more kindled. Otherwise you bar the passage. Gainst your foe of my assistance. Dot. Aside. Would that I but knew his name. Rosara, not to think I set so little. Value on such confidence. Know my enemy and my victim. Is no less than Prince Astolfo. Duke of Muscovy. Clotaldo, aside, resistance. Badly can my grief supply. Since, tis heavier than I figured. Let us sift the matter deeper. Dot. If a Muscovite by birth, then. He who is your natural lord. Could not, gainst you have committed. Any wrong, reseek your country. And abandon the wild impulse. That has driven you here. Rosara, I know. Though a prince, he has committed. Gainst me a great wrong. Clotaldo, he could not. Even although your face was stricken. By his angry hand. Aside. Oh, heavens. Rosara, mine's a wrong more deep and bitter. Clotaldo, tell it, then, it cannot be. Worse than what my fancy pictures. Rosara, I will tell it. Though I know not. With the respect your presence gives me. With the affection you awaken. With the esteem your worth elicits. How with bold face here to tell you. That this outer dress is simply. An enigma, since it is not. What it seems. And from this hint, then. If I'm not what I appear. And Estolfo with this princess. Comes to wed, judge how by him. I was wronged, I've said sufficient. Exeunt Rosara and Claren. Clotaldo, listen. Hear me. Wait. Oh, stay. What a labyrinth and thicket. Is all this, where reason gives. Not a thread whereby to issue. My own honor here is wronged. Powerful is my foe's position. I a vassal, she a woman. Heaven reveals some way in pity. Though I doubt it has the power. 
when in such confused abysses. Heaven is all one fearful presage. And the world itself a riddle. Act the Second. A Hall in the Royal Palace. Scene 1. Basilius and Clotaldo. Clotaldo, everything has been effected. As you ordered. Basilius, how all happened for. Let me know, my good Clotaldo. Clotaldo, it was done, sire, in this manner. With the tranquilizing draft. Which was made, as you commanded. Of confections duly mixed. With some herbs, whose juice extracted. Has a strange tyrannic power. Has some secret force imparted. Which all human sense and speech. Robs, deprives. And counteracteth. And as, twere a living corpse. Leaves the man whose lips have quaffed it. So asleep that all his senses. All his powers are overmastered. No need have we to discuss. That this fact can really happen. Since, my lord, experience gives us. Many a clear and proved example. Certain, tis that nature's secrets. May by medicine be extracted. And that not an animal. Not a stone, or herb that's planted. But some special quality. Doth possess, for if the malice. Of man's heart, a thousand poisons. That give death. Hath power to examine. Is it then so great a wonder. That, their venom being abstracted. If, as death by some is given. Sleep by others is imparted. Putting, then, aside the doubt. That, tis possible this should happen. A thing proved beyond all question. Both by reason and example. With the sleeping draught, in fine. Made of opium superadded. To the poppy and the henbane. I to Sigismund's apartment. Cell, in fact, went down, and with him. Spoke a while upon the grammar. Of the sciences. Those first studies. Which mute nature's gentle masters. Silent skies and hills, had taught him. In which school divine and ample. The bird song, the wild beast's roar. Were a lesson and a language. Then to raise his spirit more. To the high design you planned here. I discoursed on, as my theme. The swift flight, the stare undazzled. Of a pride-plumed eagle bold. Which with back-averted talons. Scorning the tame fields of air. Seeks the sphere of fire, and passes. Through its flame a flash of feathers. Or a comet's hair untangled. I extolled its soaring flight. Saying, Thou at last art master. Of thy house, thou art he king of birds. It is right thou shouldst surpass them. He who needed nothing more. Than to touch upon the matter. Of high royalty, with a bearing. As became him, boldly answered. For in truth his princely blood. Moves, excites, inflames his ardor. To attempt great things, he said. In the restless realm of atoms. Given to birds, that even one. Should swear fealty as a vassal. I, reflecting upon this. I am consoled by my disasters. For, at least, if I obey. I obey through force, untrammeled. Free to act, I ne'er will own. Any man on earth my master. This, his usual theme of grief. Having roused him nigh to madness. I occasion took to proffer. The drug draught, he drank, but hardly. Had the liquor from the vessel. Passed into his breast, when fastest. Sleep his senses seized, a sweat. Cold as ice, the life-blood hardened. In his veins, his limbs grew stiff. So that, knew I not, t'was acted. Death was there, feigned death, his life. I could doubt not had departed. Then those, to whose care you trust. This experiment, in a carriage. Brought him here, were all things fitting. The high majesty and the grandeur. 
of his person are provided. In the bed of your state chamber. They have placed him, where the stupor. Having spent its force and vanished. They, as, toy yourself, my lord. Him will serve as you commanded. And if my obedient service. Seems to merit some slight largesse. I would ask but this alone. My presumption you will pardon. That you tell me, with what object. Have you, in this secret manner. To your palace brought him here. Basilius, good Claudaldo, what you ask me. Is so just, to you alone. I would give full satisfaction. Sigismund, my son, the hard. Influence of his hostile planet. As you know, doth threat a thousand. Dreadful tragedies and disasters. I desire to test if heaven. An impossible thing to happen. Could have lied, if having given us. Proofs unnumbered, countless samples. Of his evil disposition. He might prove more mild, more guarded. At the last. And self-subdued. By his prudence and true valor. Change his character. For, tis man. That alone controls the planets. This it is I wish to test. Having brought him to this palace. Where he'll learn he is my son. And display his natural talents. If he nobly hath subdued him. He will reign. But if his manners. Show him tyrannous and cruel. Then his chains once more shall clasp him. But for this experiment. Now you probably will ask me. Of what moment was, to bring him. Thus asleep and in this manner. And I wish to satisfy you. Giving all your doubts an answer. If today he learns that he. Is my son, and some hours after. Finds himself once more restored. To his misery and his shackles. Certain, tis that from his temper. Blank despair may end in madness. But once knowing who he is. Can he be consoled thereafter? Yes, and thus I wish to leave. One door open, one free passage. By declaring all he saw. Was a dream. With this advantage. We attain two ends. The first. Is to put beyond all cavil. His condition, for on waking. He will show his thoughts, his fancies. To console him is the second. Since, although obeyed and flattered. He beholds himself a while. And then back in prison shackled. Finds him, he will think he dreamed. And he rightly so may fancy. For, Claudaldo, in this world. All who live but dream they act here. Clotaldo, reasons fail me not to show. That the experiment may not answer. But there is no remedy now. For a sign from the apartment. Tells me that he hath awoken. And even hitherward advances. Basilius, it is best that I retire. But to you, so long his master. Near him stand, the wild confusion. That his waking sense may darken. Dissipate by simple truth. Clotaldo, then your license you have granted. That I may declare it. Basilius, yes. For it possibly may happen. That admonished of his danger. He may conquer his worst passions, exit. Scene 2. Claren and Clotaldo. Claren, aside, for good blows are all it cost me. To come here, inflicted smartly. By a red-robed halberdier. With a beard to match his jacket. At that price I see the show. For no windows half so handy. As that which, without entreating. Tickets of the Ticketmaster. A man carried with himself. Since for all the feasts and gallows. Cool effrontery is the window. Whence at ease he gazes at them. Clotaldo, aside, this is Claren, heavens. Of her. Yes, I say, of her the valet. She, who dealing in misfortunes. Has my pain to Poland carried. Any news, friend Claren? Claren, news? 
Yes, sir, since your great compassion. Is disposed Rosara's outrage. To revenge, she has changed her habit. And resumed her proper dress. Clotaldo, tis quite right, lest possible scandal. Might arise. Claren, more news, her name. Having changed and wisely bartered. For your niece's name, she now. So in honor has advanced her. That among Estrella's ladies. She here with her in the palace. Lives. Clotaldo, tis right that I once more. Should her honor re-establish. Claren, news, that anxiously she waiteth. For that very thing to happen. When you may have time to try it. Clotaldo, most discreetly has she acted. Soon the time will come, believe me. Happily to end this matter. Claren, news, too, that she's well regaled. Feasted like a queen, and flattered. On the strength of being your niece. And the last news, and the saddest. Is that I who here came with her. I am with hunger almost famished. None remember me, or think. I am Claren, Clarion rather. And that if that Clarion sounded. All the court would know what passes. For there are two things, to wit. A brass clarion and a lackey. That are bad at keeping secrets. And it so may chance, if haply. I am forced to break my silence. They of me may sing this passage. Never, when the day is near. Does clarion sound more clear, five. Clotaldo, your complaint is too well founded. I will get you satisfaction. Meanwhile you may wait on me. Claren, see, sir, Sigismund advances. Scene 3. Music and Song. Sigismund enters, lost in amazement. Servants minister to him, presenting costly robes. Clotaldo, and Claren. Sigismund, help me, heaven, what's this I see? Help me, heaven, what's this I view? Things I scarce believe are true. But, if true, which fright not me. I in palaces of state. I, neath silks and cloth of gold. I, around me, to behold. Rich-robed servants watch and wait. I so soft a bed to press. While sweet sleep my senses bowed. I to wake in such a crowd. Who assist me even to dress. Twere deceit to say I dream. Waking I recall my lot. I am Sigismund, am I not? Heaven make plain what dark doth seem. Tell me, what is fantasy? Wild, misleading, dream adept. So affected while I slept. That I still the phantom see. But let that be as it may. Why perplex myself and brood? Better taste the present good. Come what will some other day. First servant, aside to the second servant, and to Claren what a sadness doth oppress him. Second servant, who in such like case would be. Less surprised and sad than he. Claren, I for one. Second servant, to the first, you had best address him. First servant, to Sigismund, may they sing again. Sigismund, no, no. I don't care to hear them sing. Second servant, I conceived the song might bring. To your thoughts am ease. Sigismund, not so. Voice that but charm the ear. Cannot soothe my sorrow's pain. Tis the soldier's martial strain. That alone I love to hear. Clotaldo, may your highness, mighty prince. Deign to let me kiss your hand. I would first of all this land. My profound respect evince. Sigismund, aside, tis my jailer. How can he change his harshness and neglect to this language of respect? What can have occurred to me? Clotaldo, the new state in which I find you must create a vague surprise. Doubts unnumbered must arise to bewilder and to blind you. I would make your prospect fair. Through the maze a path would show. Thus, my lord, tis right you know. 
that you are the prince and heir of this Polish realm, if late you lay hidden and concealed. Twas that we were forced to yield to the stern decrees of fate, which strange ills, I know not how, threatened on this land to bring. Should the laurel of a king ever crown thy princely brow, still relying on the power of your will the stars to bind, for a man of resolute mind, can them bind how dark they lower to this palace from your cell, in your lifelong turret keep. They have borne you while dull sleep, held your spirit in its spell, soon to see you and embrace. Comes the king, your father, here. He will make the rest all clear. Sigismund, why, thou traitor vile and base? What need I to know the rest? Since it is enough to know who I am my power to show, and the pride that fills my breast. Why this treason brought to light? Has thou to thy country done? As to hide from the king's son. Gainst all reason and all right. This is rank. Clotaldo, O, oh, destiny. Sigismund, thou the traitor's part has played. Gainst the law. The king betrayed. And done cruel wrong to me. Thus for each distinct offence. Have the law, the king, and I. Be condemned this day to die. By my hands. Second servant, prince. Sigismund, no pretense. Shall undo the debt I owe you. Cadiff, hence. By heaven. I say. If you dare to stop my way. From the window I will throw you. Second servant, fly, Clodaldo. Clotaldo, woe to thee. In thy pride so powerful seeming. Without knowing thou art dreaming. Exit. Second servant, think. Sigismund, away. Don't trouble me. Second servant, he could not the king deny. Sigismund, bade to do a wrongful thing. He should have refused the king. And, besides, his prince was I. Second servant, twas not his affair to try. If the act was wrong or right. Sigismund, you're indifferent, black or white. Since so pertly you reply. Claren, what the prince says is quite true. What you do is wrong, I say. Second servant, who gave you this license, pray. Claren, no one gave, I took it. Sigismund, who? Art thou, speak. Claren, a meddling fellow. Prating, prying, fond of scrapes. General of all jackanapes. And most merry when most mellow. Sigismund, you alone in this new sphere. Have amused me. Claren, that's quite true, sir. For I am the great amuser. Of all Sigismunds who are here. Scene 4. Astolfo, Sigismund, Claren, servants, and musicians. Astolfo, thousand tunes be blessed the day. Prince, that gives thee to our sight. Son of Poland, whose glad light. Makes this whole horizon gay. As when from the rosy fountains. Of the dawn the stream rays run. Since thou issuest like the sun. From the bosom of the mountains. And though late do not defer. With thy sovereign light to shine. Round thy brow the laurel twine. Deathless crown. Sigismund, God guard thee, sir. Astolfo, in not knowing me I o'erlook. But alone for this defect. This response that lacks respect. And due honor. Muscovy's duke. Am I, and your cousin born. Thus my equal I regard thee. Sigismund, did there, when I said, God guard thee. Lie concealed some latent scorn. Then if so, now having got thy big name, and seeing thee vexed, when thou comest to see me next, I will say God guard thee not. Second servant, to Astolfo, think, your highness, if he errs. Thus, his mountain births at fault. Every word is an assault. 
to Sigismund. Duke Astolfo, sir, prefers. Sigismund, tut. His talk became a bore. Nay his act was worse than that. He presumed to wear his hat. Second servant, as grandee. Sigismund, but I am more. Second servant, nevertheless respect should be. Much more marked betwixt ye two. Than, twixt others. Sigismund, and pray who? Asked your meddling thus with me? Scene 5. Estrella, the same. Estrella, welcome may your highness be. Welcomed off to this thy throne. Which long longing for its own. Finds at length its joy in thee. Where, in spite of bygone fears. May your reign be great and bright. And your life in its long flight. Count by ages, not by years. Sigismund, to Claren tell me, thou, say, who can be. This supreme of loveliness. Goddess in a woman's dress. At whose feet divine we see. Heaven its choicest gifts doth lay. This sweet maid. Her name declare. Claren, tis your star, named six cousin fair. Sigismund, nay, the sun, twere best to say dot. To Estrella. Though thy sweet felicitation. Adds new splendor to my throne. Tis for seeing thee alone. That I merit gratulation. Therefore I a prize have drawn. That I scarce deserve to win. And am doubly blessed therein. Star, that in the rosy dawn. Dimmest with transcendent ray. Orbs that brightest gem the blue. What is left the sun to do? When thou risest with the day. Give me then thy hand to kiss. In whose cup of snowy whiteness. Drinks the day delicious brightness. Estrella, what a courtly speech is this. Astolfo, aside, if he takes her hand I feel. I am lost. Second servant, aside, Astolfo's grief. I perceive, and bring relief. Think, my lord, excuse my zeal. That perhaps this is too free. Since Astolfo. Sigismund, did I say. Woe to him that stops my way. Second servant, what I said was just. Sigismund, to me. This is tiresome and absurd. Not is just, or good or ill. In my sight that balks my will. Second servant, why, my lord, yourself I heard. Say in any righteous thing. It was proper to obey. Sigismund, you must, too, have heard me say. Him I would from window throw. Who should tease me or defy? Second servant, men like me perhaps might show. That could not be done, sir. Sigismund, no. Then, by heaven, at least, I'll try. He seizes him in his arms and rushes to the side. All follow, and. Return immediately. Astolfo, what is this I see? Oh, woe. Estrella, oh, prevent him. Follow me. Exit. Sigismund, returning. From the window into the sea. He has fallen, I told him so. Astolfo, these strange bursts of savage malice. You should regulate, if you can. Wild beasts are to civilized man. As rude mountains to a palace. Sigismund, take a bit of advice for that. Pause ere such bold words are said. Lest you may not have a head. Upon which to hang your hat. Exit Astolfo. Scene 6. Basilius, Sigismund, and Claren. Basilius, what's all this? Sigismund, a trifling thing. One who teased and thwarted me. I have just thrown into the sea. Claren, to Sigismund, no, my lord. It is the king. Basilius, ere the first day's sun hath set. Has thy coming cost a life? Sigismund, why he dared me to the strife. And I only won the bet. Basilius, prince, my grief, indeed is great. Coming here when I had thought. 
that admonish thou wert taught. To overcome the stars and fate. Still to see such rage abide. In the heart I hoped was free. That thy first sad act should be. A most fearful homicide. How could I, by love conducted. Trust me to thine arms embracing. When their haughty interlacing. Has already been instructed. How to kill. For who could see. Say, some dagger bare and bloody. By some wretch's heart made ruddy. But would fear it. Who is he. Who may happen to behold. On the ground the gory stain. Where another man was slain. But must shudder. The most bold. Yields at once to nature's laws. Thus I, seeing in your arms. The dread weapon that alarms. And the stain, must fain withdraw. And though in embraces dear. I would press you to my heart. I without them must depart. For, alas. Your arms I fear. Sigismund, well, without them I must stay. As I've stayed for many a year. For a father so severe. Who could treat me in this way? Whose unfeeling heart could tear me? From his side even when a child. Who, a denizen of the wild. As a monster there could rear me. Any by many an artful plan. Sought my death, it cannot grieve me. Much his arms will not receive me. Who has scarcely left me man. Basilius, would to God it had not been. Act of mine that name conferred. Then thy voice I ne'er had heard. Then thy boldness ne'er had seen. Sigismund, did you manhood's right retain. I would then have not to say. But to give and take away. Gives me reason to complain. For although to give with grace. Is the noblest act amongst men. To take back the gift again. Is the basest of the base. Basilius, this then is thy grateful mood. For my changing thy sad lot. To a prince's. Sigismund, and for what? Should I show my gratitude? Tyrant of my will o'erthrown. If thou hoary art in grey. Dying, what do'st give me? Say. Do'st thou give what's not mine own? Thou art he my father and my king. Then the pomp these walls present. Comes to me by due descent. As a simple, natural thing. Yes, this sunshine pleaseth me. But, tis not through thee I bask. Nay, a reckoning I might ask. For the life, love, liberty. That through thee I've lost so long. Thine, tis rather to thank me. That I do not claim from thee. Compensation for my wrong. Basilius, still untamed and uncontrolled. Heaven fulfills its word I feel. I to that same court appeal. Gainst thy taunts, thou vain and bold. But although the truth thou'st heard. And now know'st thy name and race. And do'st see thee in this place. Where to all thou art preferred. Yet be warned, and on thee take. Ways more mild and more beseeming. For perhaps thou art but dreaming. When it seems that thou art he awake. Exit. Sigismund, is this, then, a phantom scene? Do I wake in seeming show? No, I dream not, since I know. What I am and what I've been. And although thou shouldst repent thee. Remedy is now too late. Who I am I know, and fate. Howsoe'er thou shouldst lament thee. Cannot take from me my right. Of being born this kingdom's heir. If I saw myself erewhile. Prisoned, bound, kept out of sight. Twas that never on my mind. Dawned the truth. But now I know. Who I am, a mingled show. Of the man and beast combined. Scene 7. Rosara, in female attire, Sigismund, Claren, and servants. Rosara, aside. To wait upon Estrella, I come here. And lest I meet Astolfo tremble with much fear. Clotaldo's wishes are. The Duke should know me not, 
and from afar. See me, if see he must. My honor is at stake, he says, my trust. Is in Clotaldo's truth. He will protect my honor and my youth. Claren, to Sigismund, of all this palace here can boast. All that you yet have seen, say which has pleased you most. Sigismund, nothing surprised me, nothing scared. Because for everything I was prepared. But if I felt for aught, or more or less. Of admiration, t'was the loveliness. Of woman, I have read. Somewhere in books on which my spirit fed. That which caused God the greatest care to plan. Because in him a little world he formed, was man. But this were truer said, unless I err. Of woman, for a little heaven he made in her. She who in beauty from her birth. Surpasses man as heaven surpasseth earth. Nay, more, the one I see. Rosara, aside, the prince is here. I must this instant flee. Sigismund, here, woman. Stay. Nor wed the western with the orient ray. Flying with rapid tread. For join the orient rose and western red. The light and the cold gloom. The day will sink untimely to its tomb. But who is this I see? Rosara, aside, I doubt and yet believe that it is he. Sigismund, aside, this beauty I have seen. Some other time. Rosara, aside, this proud, majestic mien. This form I once saw bound. Within a narrow cell. Sigismund, aside, my life I have found. Dot. Woman, the sweetest name. That man can breathe, or flattering language frame. Who art thou? For before. I see thee, I believe and I adore. Faith makes my love sublime. Persuading me we've met some other time. Fair woman, speak, my will must be obeyed. Rosara, in bright Estrella's train a hapless maid dot. Aside. He must not know my name. Sigismund, the sun, say rather, of that star whose flame however bright its blaze, is but the pale reflection of thy rays. In the fair land of flowers, the realm of sweets that lies in odorous bowers, the goddess rose I have seen, by right divine of beauty reign as queen. I have seen where brightest shine, gems, the assembled glories of the mine, the brilliant throng elect the diamond king, for the superior splendor it doth fling. Amid the halls of light. Where the unresting star crowds meet at night. I have seen fair Hesper rise. And take the foremost place of all the skies. And in that higher zone. Where the sun calls the planets round his throne. I have seen, with sovereign sway. That he presides the oracle of the day. How, then, mid flowers of earth or stars of air. Mid stones or suns if that which is most fair. The preference gains, canst thou. Before a lesser beauty bend and bow. When thine own charms compose. Something more bright than sun, stone, star. Or rose. Scene 8. Clotaldo, who remains at the side scene, Sigismund, Claren, and servants. Clotaldo, aside, to calm Prince Sigismund devolves on me. Because, t'was I who reared him, what do I see? Rosara, thy favor, sir, I prize. To thee the silence of my speech replies. For when the reason's dull, the mind depressed. He best doth speak who keeps his silence best. Sigismund, you must not leave me. Stay. What? Would you rob my senses of the ray? Your beauteous presence gave. Rosara, that license, from your highness, I must crave. Sigismund, the violent efforts that you make. Show that you do not ask the leave you take. Rosara, I hope to take it, if it is not given. Sigismund, you rouse my courtesy to rage, by heaven. In me resistance, as it were, distills. A cruel poison that my patience kills. Rosara, 
then though that poison may be strong. The source of fury, violence, and wrong. Potent thy patience to subdue. It dare not the respect to me that's due. Sigismund, as if to show I may. You take the terror of your charms away. For I am but too prone. To attempt the impossible, I today have thrown. Out of this window one who said, like you. I dare not do the thing I said I would do. Now just to show I can. I may throw out your honor, as the man. Clotaldo, aside, more obstinate doth he grow. What course to take, O oh heavens! I do not know. When wild desire, nay, crime, perils my honor for the second time. Rosara, not vainly, as I see. This hapless land was worn thy tyranny. In fearful scandals would eventuate. In wrath and wrong, in treachery, rage and hate. But who in truth could claim? Ought from a man who is but a man in name. Audacious, cruel, cold. Inhuman, proud, tyrannical, and bold. Mon beasts a wild beast born. Sigismund, it was to save me from such words of scorn. So courteously I spoke. Thinking to bind you by a gentler yoke. But if I am in aught what you have said. Then, as God lives, I will be all you dread. Ho, there. Here leave us. See to it at your cost. The door be locked, let no one in. Exeunt Claren and the attendants. Rosara, I'm lost. Consider. Sigismund, I'm a despot, and tis vain. You strive to move me, or my will restrain. Clotaldo, aside, oh, what a moment. What an agony. I will go forth and stop him though I die. He advances. My lord, consider. Stay. Sigismund, a second time you dare to cross my way. Old dotard, do you hold? My rage in such slight awe you are so bold. What brought you hither? Speak. Clotaldo, the accents of this voice, however weak. To tell you to restrain. Your passions, if as king you wish to reign. Not to be cruel, though you deem. Yourself the lord of all for all may be a dream. Sigismund, you but provoke my rage. By these old saws, the unwelcome light of age. In killing you, at least I'll see. If tis a dream or truth. As he is about to draw his dagger Clotaldo detains it, and throws himself on his knees. Clotaldo, sole hope for me. To save my life is thus to humbly kneel. Sigismund, Take your audacious hand from off my steel. Clotaldo, till some kind aid be sent. Till someone come who may your rage prevent. I will not loose my hold. Rosara, oh, heaven. Sigismund, I say. Loose it, old dotard, grim and gaunt and grey. Or by another death. They struggle. I'll crush you in my arms while you have breath. Rosara, quick. Quick. They slay. Clodaldo, help. Oh, help. Astolfo enters at this moment, and Clotaldo falls at his feet, he stands between them. Astolfo, this strange affray. What can it mean, magnanimous prince? Would you? So bright a blade and brew. In blood that age already doth congeal. Back to its sheath return the shining steel. Sigismund, yes, when it is bathed red. In his base blood. Astolfo, this threatened life hath fled. For sanctuary to my feet. I must protect it in that poor retreat. Sigismund, protect your own life, then, for in this way. Striking at it, I will the grudge repay. I owe you for the past. Astolfo, I thus defend. My life but majesty will not offend. Astolfo draws his sword and they fight. Clotaldo, oh! Wound him not, my lord. Scene 9 Basilius, Estrella and attendants, Sigismund, Astolfo, and Clotaldo. 
Basilius, swords flashing here. Estrella, aside, Astolfo is engaged, oh, pain severe. Basilius, what caused this quarrel? Speak, say why. Astolfo, tis nothing now, my lord, since thou art by. Sigismund, tis much, although thou now art by, my lord. I wish to kill this old man with my sword. Basilius, did you not then respect? These snow-white hairs. Clotaldo, my lord will recollect. They scarce deserved it, being mine. Sigismund, who dares? To ask of me do I respect white hairs? Your own some day. My feet may trample in the public way. For I have not as yet revenged my wrong. Your treatment so unjust and my sad state so long. Exit. Basilius, but ere that dawn doth break. You must return to sleep, where when you wake. All that hath happened here will seem. As is the glory of the world, a dream. Exeunt the king, Clotaldo, and attendants. Scene 10. Estrella and Astolfo. Astolfo, ah, how rarely fate doth lie. When it some misfortune threatens, seven. Dubious when tis good that's promised. When tis evil, ah, too certain. What a good astrologer. Would he be, whose art foretelleth. Only cruel things, for, doubtless. They would turn out true for ever. This in Sigismund and me. Is exemplified, Estrella. Since between our separate fortunes. Such a difference is presented. In his case had been foreseen. Murders, miseries, and excesses. And in all they turned out true. Since all happened as expected. But in mine, here seeing, lady. Rays so rare and so resplendent. That the sun is but their shadow. And even heaven a faint resemblance. When fate promised me good fortune. Trophies, praises, and all blessings. It spoke ill and it spoke well. For it was of both expressive. When it held out hopes of favor. But disdain alone affected. Estrella, oh, I doubt not these fine speeches. Are quite true, although intended. Doubtless for that other lady. She whose portrait was suspended. From your neck, when first, Astolfo. At this court here you addressed me. This being so, tis she alone. Who these compliments deserveth. Go and pay them to herself. For like bills that are protested. In the counting house of love. Are those flatteries and finesses. Which to other kings and ladies. Have been previously presented. Scene 11. Rosara, who remains at the side, Estrella, and Estolfo. Rosara, aside, well, thank God, my miseries. Have attained their lowest level. Since by her who sees this sight. Nothing worse can be expected. Astolfo, then that portrait from my breast. Shall be taken, that thy perfect. Beauty there may reign instead. For where bright Estrella enters. Shadow cannot be, or star. Where the sun, I go to fetch it dot. Aside. Pardon, beautiful Rosara. This offense, the absent never. Man or woman, as this shows. Faith of plighted vows remember. Exit. Rosara comes forward. Rosara, aside, not a single word I heard. Being afraid they might observe me. Estrella, oh, Estrella. Rosara, my good lady. Estrella, nothing could have pleased me better. Then you're timely coming here. I have something confidential. To entrust you with. Rosara, you honor. Far too much my humble service. Estrella, brief as is the time, Estrella. I have known you, you already. Of my heart possess the keys. Tis for this and your own merits. That I venture to entrust you. With what oft I have attempted. From myself to hide. Rosara, your slave. Estrella, 
then concisely to express it. No, Astolfo, my first cousin. Tis enough that word to mention. For some things may best be said. When not spoken but suggested. Soon expects to wed with me. If my fate so far relenteth. As that by one single bliss. All past sorrows may be lessened. I was troubled, the first day. That we met, to see suspended. From his neck a lady's portrait. On the point I urged him gently. He so courteous and polite. Went immediately to get it. And will bring it here. From him. I should feel quite disconcerted. To receive it. You here stay. And request him to present it. Unto you. I say no more. You are beautiful and clever. You must know too what is love. Exit. Scene 12. Rosara, would I knew it not. Oh help me. Now, kind heaven. For who could be. So prudential, so collected. As to know how best to act. In so painful a dilemma. Is there in the world a being. Is there one a more inclement. Heaven has marked with more misfortunes. Has, mid more of sorrow centered. What, bewildered, shall I do? When, tis vain to be expected. That my reason can console me. Or consoling be my helper. From my earliest misfortune. Everything that I've attempted. Has been but one misery more. Each the other's sad successor. All inheritors of themselves. Thus, the phoenix they resemble. One is from the other born. New life springs where old life in death. And the young are warmly cradled. By the ashes of the elder. Once a wise man called them cowards. Seeing that misfortunes never. Have been seen to come alone. But I call them brave, intrepid. Who go straight unto their end. And ne'er turn their backs in terror. By the man who brings them with him. Everything may be attempted. Since he need on no occasion. Have the fear of being deserted. I may say so, since at all times. Whatsoever life presented. I, without them, never saw me. Nor will they grow weary ever. Till they see me in death's arms. Wounded by fate's final weapon. Woe is me. But what today? Shall I do in this emergence? If I tell my name, Claudaldo. Unto whom I am indebted. For my very life and honor. May be with me much offended. Since he said my reparation. Must in silence be expected. If I tell not to Astolfo. Who I am, and he detects me. How can I dissemble then? For although a feigned resemblance. Eyes and voice and tongue might try. Ah, the truthful heart would tremble. And expose the lie. But wherefore? Study what to do. Tis certain. That however I may study. Think beforehand how to nerve me. When at last the occasion comes. Then alone what grief suggesteth. I will do, for no one holds. In his power the heart's distresses. And thus what to say or do. As my soul cannot determine. Grief must only reach today. Its last limit, pain be ended. And at last an exit make. From the doubts that so perplex me. How to act, but until then. Help me, heaven, oh, deign to help me. Scene 13. Astolfo, with the portrait, and Rosara. Astolfo, here then is the portrait, princess. But, good God. Rosara, your highness trembles. What has startled, what surprised you? Astolfo, the, Rosara, to see present. Rosara, I Rosara. Oh, your highness. Is deceived by some resemblance. Doubtless to some other lady. I'm Astria, one who merits. Not the glory of producing. An emotion so excessive. Astolfo, 
Ah, Rosara thou mayst fain. But the soul bears no deception. And though seeing thee as Astria. As Rosara it must serve thee. Rosara, I, not knowing what your highness. Speaks of, am of course prevented. From replying aught but this. That Astraea, the bright Hesper. Of this sphere, was pleased to order. That I here should wait expectant. For that portrait. Which to me. She desires you give at present. For some reason she prefers. It through me should be presented. So Estrella, say, my star. Wishes, so a fate relentless. Wills, in things that bring me loss. So Estrella now expecteth. Astolfo, though such efforts you attempt. Still how badly you dissemble. My Rosara. Tell the eyes. In their music to keep better. Concert with the voice, because. Any instrument whatever. Would be out of tune that sought. To combine and blend together. The true feelings of the heart. With the false word speech expresses. Rosara, I wait only, as I said. For the portrait. Astolfo, since you're bent then. To the end to keep this tone. I adopt it, and dissemble. Tell the princess, then, Astria. That I so esteem her message. That to send to her a copy. Seems to me so slight a present. How so highly it is valued. By myself, I think it better. To present the original. And you easily may present it. Since. In point of fact, you bring it. With you in your own sweet person. Rosara, when it has been undertaken. By a man, bold, brave, determined. To obtain a certain object. Though he get perhaps a better. Still not bringing back the first. He returns despised, I beg, then. That your highness give the portrait. I, without it, dare not venture. Astolfo, how, then, if I do not give it? Will you get it? Rosara, I will get it. Thus, ungrateful. She attempts to snatch it. Astolfo, tis in vain. Rosara, it must ne'er be seen, no, never. In another woman's hands. Astolfo, thou art dreadful. Rosara, thou deceptive. Astolfo, oh, enough, Rosara mine. Rosara, thine. Thou least, base deserter. Both struggle for the portrait. Scene 14. Estrella, Rosara, and Estolfo. Estrella, Prince. Estrella. What is this? Estolfo, aside, heavens. Estrella. Rosara, aside, love befriend me. Give me wit enough my portrait. To regain, if thou wouldst learn then. To Estrella. What the matter is, my lady. I will tell thee. Astolfo, aside to Rosara, wouldst overwhelm me. Rosara, you commanded me to wait here. For the prince, and representing. You, to get from him a portrait. I remained alone, expecting. And, as often by one thought. Is some other thought suggested? Seeing that you spoke of portraits. I, reminded thus, remembered. That I had one of myself. In my sleeve, I wished to inspect it. For a person quite alone. Even by trifles is diverted. From my hand I let it fall. On the ground, the prince, who entered. With the other lady's portrait. Raised up mine, but so rebellious. Was he to what you had asked him? That, instead of his presenting. One, he wished to keep the other. Since he mine will not surrender. To my prayers and my entreaties. Angry at this ill-time jesting. I endeavored to regain it. That which in his hand is held there. Is my portrait, if you see it. You can judge of the resemblance. Estrella, Duke, at once, give up the portrait. She takes it from his hand. 
Astolfo, princess. Estrella, well, the tints were blended. By no cruel hand, methinks. Rosara, is it like me? Estrella, like. Tis perfect. Rosara, now demand from him the other. Estrella, take your own, and leave our presence. Rosara, aside, I have got my portrait back. Come what may I am contented. Exit. Scene 15. Estrella and Estolfo. Estrella, give me now the other portrait. For, although perhaps I never may again address or see you, I desire not, no, to let it in your hands remain, if only for my folly in requesting you to give it. Astolfo, aside, how escape from this singular dilemma? Though I wish, most beauteous princess, to obey thee and to serve thee, still I cannot give the portrait thou dost ask for, since Estrella, a wretched and false-hearted lover art thou. Now I wish it not presented, so to give thee no pretext for reminding me that ever I had asked it at thy hands. Exit. Astolfo, hear me. Listen. Wait. I remember. God, what hast thou done, Rosara? Why, or wherefore, on what errand? To destroy thyself and me. Hast thou Poland rashly entered? Exit. Scene 16. Prison of the Prince in the Tower. Sigismund, as at the commencement, clothed in skins, chained, and lying on the ground. Clotaldo, two servants, and Claren. Clotaldo, leave him here on the ground. Where his day, its pride being o'er, finds its end too. A servant, as before. With the chain his feet are bound. Claren, never from that sleep profound. Wake, O Sigismund, or rise. To behold with wondering eyes. All thy glorious life o'erthrown. Like a shadow that hath flown. Like a bright brief flame that dies. Clotaldo, one who can so wisely make. Such reflections on this case. Should have ample time and space. Even for the solon's sake. To the servant. To discuss it, him you'll take. To this cell here, and keep bound. Pointing to an adjoining room. Claren, but why me? Clotaldo, because, tis found. Safe, when Clarion secrets know. Clarions to lock up, that so. They may not have power to sound. Claren, did I, since you treat me thus. Try to kill my father. No. Did I from the window throw. That unlucky Icarus. Is my drink somniferous? Do I dream? Then why be pent? Clotaldo, tis a clarion's punishment. Claren, then a horn of low degree. Yeah, a cornet I will be. A safe, silent instrument. They take him away, and Clotaldo remains alone. Scene 17. Basilius, disguised, Clotaldo, and Sigismund, asleep. Basilius, hark, Clotaldo. Clotaldo, my lord here. Thus disguised, your majesty. Basilius, foolish curiosity. Leads me in this lowly gear. To find out, ah, me. With fear. How the sudden change he bore. Clotaldo, there behold him as before. In his miserable state. Basilius, wretched prince. Unhappy fate. Birth by baneful stars watched o'er. Go and wake him cautiously. Now that strength and force lie chained. By the opiate he hath drained. Clotaldo, muttering something restlessly. See he lies. Basilius, let's listen, he. May some few clear words repeat. Sigismund, speaking in his sleep. Perfect prince is he whose heat. Smites the tyrant where he stands. Yes, Claudaldo dies by my hands. Yes, 
my sire shall kiss my feet. Clotaldo, death he threatens in his rage. Basilius, outrage vile he doth intend. Clotaldo, he my life has sworn to end. Basilius, he has vowed to insult my age. Sigismund, still sleeping, on the mighty world's great stage. Mid the admiring nations cheer. Valor mine, that has no peer. Enter thou, the slave so shunned. Now shall reign Prince Sigismund. And his sire he wrath shall fear. He awakes. But, ah me! Where am I? Oh! Basilius, me I must not let him see. To Clotaldo. Listening I close by will be. What you have to do you know. He retires. Sigismund, can it possibly be so? Is the truth not what it seemed? Am I chained and unredeemed? Art not thou my lifelong tome? Dark old tower? Yes. What a doom! God! What wondrous things I've dreamed! Clotaldo, now in this delusive play. Must my special part be taken? Is it not full time to waken? Sigismund, yes, to waken well it may. Clotaldo, wilt thou sleep the livelong day? Since we gazing from below. Saw the eagle sailing slow. Soaring through the azure sphere. All the time thou waited here. Didst thou never waken? Sigismund, no. Nor even now am I awake. Since such thoughts my memory fill. That it seems I'm dreaming still. Nor is this a great mistake. Since if dreams could phantoms make. Things of actual substance seem. I think seem may phantoms deem. Thus a double harvest reaping. I can see when I am sleeping. And when waking I can dream. Clotaldo, what you may have dreamed of, say. Sigismund, if I thought it only seemed. I would tell not what I dreamed. But what I beheld, I may. I awoke, and lo. I lay. Cruel and delusive thing. In a bed whose covering. Bright with blooms from rosy bowers. Seemed a tapestry of flowers. Woven by the hand of spring. Then a crowd of nobles came. Who addressed me by the name. Of their prince, presenting me. Gems and robes, on bended knee. Calm soon left me, and my frame. Thrilled with joy to hear thee tell. Of the fate that me befell. For though now in this dark den. I was prince of Poland then. Clotaldo, doubtless you repaid me well. Sigismund, no, not well, for, calling thee. Traitor vile, in furious strife. Twice I strove to take thy life. Clotaldo, but why all this rage, gainst me? Sigismund, I was master, and would be. Well revenged on foe and friend. Love one woman could defend. That, at least, for truth I deem. All else ended like a dream. That alone can never end. The king withdraws. Clotaldo, aside, from his place the king hath gone. Touched by his pathetic words. Aloud. Speaking of the king of birds. Soaring to ascend his throne. Thou didst fancy one thine own. But in dreams, however bright. Thou shouldst still have kept in sight. How for years I tended thee. For, twere well, who are we be. Even in dreams to do what's right. Exit. Scene 18. Sigismund, that is true, then let's restrain. This wild rage, this fierce condition. Of the mind, this proud ambition. Should we ever dream again? And will do so, since, tis plain. In this world's uncertain gleam. That to live is but to dream. Man dreams what he is, and wakes. Only when upon him breaks. Death's mysterious morning beam. The king dreams he is a king. And in this delusive way. Lives and rules with sovereign sway. All the cheers that round him ring. Born of air, on air take wing. 
and in ashes, mournful fate. Death dissolves his pride and state. Who would wish a crown to take? Seeing that he must awake. In the dream beyond death's gate. And the rich man dreams of gold. Gilding cares it scarce conceals. And the poor man dreams he feels. Want and misery and cold. Dreams he too who rank would hold. Dreams who bears toil's rough-ribbed hands. Dreams who wrong for wrong demands. And in fine, throughout the earth. All men dream, whatever their birth. And yet no one understands. Tis a dream that I in sadness. Here am bound, the scorn of fate. Twas a dream that once a state. I enjoyed of light and gladness. What is life? Tis but a madness. What is life? A thing that seems. A mirage that falsely gleams. Phantom joy, delusive rest. Since is life a dream at best. And even dreams themselves are dreams. Act the Third. Within the Tower. Scene 1. Claren, in a strange enchanted tower. I, for what I know, am prisoned. 8. How would ignorance be punished? If for knowledge they would kill me. What a thing to die of hunger. For a man who loves good living. I compassionate myself. All will say, I well believe it. And it well may be believed. Because silence is a virtue. Incompatible with my name. Claren, which of course forbids it. In this place my sole companions. It may safely be predicted. Are the spiders and the mice. What a pleasant nest of linnets. Owing to this last night's dream. My poor head I feel quite dizzy. From a thousand clarionets. Shams and seraphines and cymbals. Crucifixes and processions. Flagellants who so well whipped them. That as up and down they went. Some even fainted as they witnessed. How the blood ran down the others. I, if I the truth may whisper. Simply fainted from not eating. For I see me in this prison. All day wondering how this Poland. Such a, hungry, look exhibits. All night reading in the fast eye. By some half-starved poet written. 9. In the calendar of saints. If a new one is admitted. Then saint secret be my patron. For I fast upon his vigil. Though it must be owned I suffer. Justly for the fault committed. Since a servant to be silent. Is a sacrilege most sinful. A sound of drums and trumpets, with voices within. Scene 2. Soldiers and Claren. First soldier, within, he is here within this tower. Dash the door from off its hinges. Enter all. Claren, good God. Tis certain. That, tis me they seek so briskly. Since they say that I am here. What can they require? First soldier, within, go in there. Several soldiers enter. Second soldier, here he is. Claren, he's not. All the soldiers, great lord. Claren, aside, are the fellows mad or tipsy. First soldier, thou art our own prince, and we. Will not have, and won't admit of. Any but our natural prince. We no foreign prince here wish for. Let us kneel and kiss thy feet. The soldiers, live, long live our best of princes. Claren, aside, gad. The affair grows rather serious. Is it usual in this kingdom? To take some one out each day. Make him prince, and then remit him. To this tower. It must be so. Since each day that sight I witness. I must therefore play my part. Soldiers, thy feet give us. Claren, I can't give them. As I want them for myself. For a prince to be a cripple. Would be rather a defect. Second soldier, we have all conveyed our wishes. To your father. We have told him. 
you alone shall be our prince here. Not the duke. Claren, and were you guilty? Gainst my sire, of disrespect. First soldier, twas the loyalty of our spirit. Claren, if, twas loyalty, I forgive you. Second soldier, come, regain thy lost dominion. Long live Sigismund. All, live the prince. Claren, aside, say they Sigismund. Good. Admitted. Sigismund must be the name. Given to all pretended princes. Scene 3. Sigismund, Claren, and soldiers. Sigismund, who has named here Sigismund? Claren, aside, ah, I'm but an adult prince, then. First soldier, who is Sigismund? Sigismund, who? I. Second soldier, to Claren, how, then, didst thou, bold and silly, dare to make thee Sigismund? Claren, I a Sigismund. Thou fibbest. It was you yourselves that thus. Sigismundized me and princed me. All the silliness and the boldness have been by yourselves committed. First soldier, great and brave Prince Sigismund. For thy bearing doth convince us. Thou art he, although on faith. We proclaim thee as our prince here. King Basilius, thy father. Fearful of the heavens fulfilling. A prediction, which declared. He would see himself submitted. At thy victor feet, attempts. To deprive thee of thy birthright. And to give it to Astolfo. Muscovy's duke. For this his missives. Summoned all his court, the people. Understanding, by some instinct. That they had a natural king. Did not wish a foreign princeling. To rule o'er them. And tis thus that the fate for thee predicted. Treating with a noble scorn. They have sought thee where imprisoned. Thou dost live, that issuing forth. By their powerful arms assisted. From this tower. Thy crown and scepter. Thou shouldst thus regain, and quit them. Of a stranger and a tyrant. Fourth. Then, for among these cliffs here. There is now a numerous army. Formed of soldiers and banditti. That invoke thee, freedom waits thee. To the thousand voices listen. Voices within. Long, long live Prince Sigismund. Sigismund, once again, O heaven. Wouldst wish me. Once again to dream of greatness. Which may vanish in an instant. Once again to see the glories. That a royal throne encircle. Die in darkness and in gloom. Like a flame the winds extinguish. Once again by sad experience. To be taught the dangerous limits. Human power may overleap. At its birth and while it liveth. No, it must not, must not be. See me now one more submitted. To my fate. And since I know. Life is but a dream, a vision. Hence, ye phantoms, that assume. To my darkened sense the figure. And the voice of life, although. Neither voice nor form is in them. I no longer now desire. A feigned majesty, a fictitious. And fantastic pomp, illusions. Which the slightest breath that ripples. The calm ether can destroy. Even as in the early springtime. When the flowering almond tree unadvisedly exhibits all its fleeting bloom of flowers, the first blast their freshness withers, and the ornament and grace of its rosy locks disfigures. Now I know ye, know ye all, and I know the same false glimmer cheats the eyes of all who sleep. Me false shows no more bewilder. Disabused, I now know well. Life is but a dream, a vision. Second soldier, if thou thinkest we deceive thee. Turn thine eyes to those proud cliffs here. See the crowds that wait there, willing. Eager to obey thee. Sigismund, yet. Just as clearly and distinctly. 
I have seen another time. The same things that now I witness. And, was, but a dream. Second soldier, at all times. Great events, my lord, bring with them. Their own omens. And thy dream. But the actual fact prefigured. Sigismund, you say well, it was an omen. But supposing the bright vision. Even were true, since life is short. Let us dream, my soul a little. Once again, remembering now. With all forethought and provision. That we must once more awake. At the better time not distant. That being known, the undeceiving. When it comes, will be less bitter. For it takes the sting from evil. To anticipate its visit. And with this conviction, too. Even its certainty admitting. That all power being only lent. Must return unto the giver. Let us boldly then dare all dot. For the loyalty you exhibit. Thanks, my lieges. See in me. One who will this land deliver. From a stranger's alien yoke. Sound to arms, you soon shall witness. What my valor can effect. Gainst my father I have lifted. Hostile arms, to see if heaven. Has of me the truth predicted. At my feet I am to see him. But if I, from dreams delivered. Aside. Wake ere then, and nothing happens. Silence now were more befitting. All, long live Sigismund, our king. Scene 4. Clotaldo, Sigismund, Claren, and soldiers. Clotaldo, ha! What tumult, heavens! Has risen. Sigismund, well, Clotaldo. Clotaldo, sire. On me. Aside. Will his wrath now fall? Claren, aside, he'll fling him. Headlong down the steep, I'll bet. Exit. Clotaldo, at your royal feet submitted. I know how to die. Sigismund, my father. Rise, I pray, from that position. Since to you, my guide and polestar. Are my future acts committed. All my past life owes you much. For your careful supervision. Come, embrace me. Clotaldo, what do you say? Sigismund, that I dream, and that my wishes. Are to do what's right, since we. Even in dreams should do what's fitting. Clotaldo, then, my prince, if you adopt. Acting rightly as your symbol. You will pardon me for asking. So to act, that you permit me. No advice and no assistance. Can I give against my king? Better that my lord should kill me. At his feet here. Sigismund, oh, ungrateful. Villain. Wretch. Aside. But heavens. Tis fitter. I restrain myself, not knowing. But all this may be a vision. Dot. The fidelity I envy. Must be honored and admitted. Go and serve your lord the king. Where the battle rages thickest. We shall meet. To arms, my friends. Clotaldo, thanks, most generous of princes. Exit. Sigismund, fortune, we go forth to reign. Wake me not if this is vision. Let me sleep not if tis true. But whichever of them is it. To act right is what imports me. If tis true, because it is so. If tis not, that when I waken. Friends may welcome and forgive me. Exeunt all, drums beating. Scene 5. Hall in the royal palace. Basilius and Astolfo. Basilius, who can expect, Astolfo, to restrain. An untamed steed that wildly turns to flee. Who can the current of a stream detain? That swollen with pride sweeps down to seek the sea. Who can prevent from tumbling to the plain? Some mighty peak the lightning's flash sets free. Yet each were easier in its separate way. Then the rude mobs insensate rage to stay. The several bands that throng each green retreat. 
this truth proclaim by their disparked cries. Astolfo hear the echoing notes repeat. While there, tis Sigismund that rends the skies. The place where late the land was glad to greet. The choice we made, a second venture tries. And soon will be, as horror o'er it leans. The fatal theatre of tragic scenes. Astolfo, my lord, let all this joy suspended be. These plaudits cease, and to another day. Defer the rapture thou hast promised me. For if this Poland, which I hope to sway, resists today my right of sovereignty, tis that by merit I should win my way. Give me a steed, to stem this wild revolt. My pride shall be the flash that bears the bolt. Exit. Basilius, slight help there is for what is fixed by fate. And much of danger to foresee the blow. If it must fall, defense is then too late. And he who most forestalls doth most foreknow. Hard law. Stern rule. Dire fact to contemplate. That he who thinks to fly doth nearer go. Thus by the very means that I employed. My country and myself I have destroyed. Scene 6. Estrella and Basilius. Estrella, if, mighty lord, thy presence, which it braves. The tumult of the crowd cannot defeat. The frenzy of the multitude that raves. In hostile bands through every square and street. Thou lt see thy kingdom swim in crimson waves. A purple sea of blood shall round it beat. For even already in its dismal doom. All is disaster, tragedy, and gloom. Such is thy kingdom's ruin, so severe. The hard and bloody trial fate hath sent. Dazed is the eye, and terrified the ear. Dark grows the sun, and every wind is spent. Each stone a mournful obelisk doth rear. And every flower erects a monument. A grave seems every house, whence life is gone. Each soldier is a living skeleton. Scene 7. Clotaldo, Basilius, and Estrella. Clotaldo, thanks be to God, I reach thy feet alive. Basilius, what news of Sigismund, Clotaldo, say? Clotaldo, the crowd, whom frenzy and blind impulse drive. Into the tower resistless burst their way. Release the prince, who seeing thus revive. The honor he had tasted for one day. Looked brave, declaring, in a haughty tone. The truth at last that heaven must now make known. Basilius, give me a horse. In person forth I'll ride. To check the pride of this ungrateful son. Where science erred let now the sword decide. By my own valor shall my throne be won. Exit. Estrella, let me the glory of the fight divide. A twinkling star beside that royal sun. Bologna matched with Mars, for I would dare. To scale even heaven to rival palace there. Exit, and they sound to arms. Scene 8. Rosara, who detains Clotaldo. Rosara, though the trumpets from afar. Echo in thy valorous breast. Hear me, list to my request. For I know that all is war. Well thou knowest that I came. Poor to Poland, sad, dejected. And that graciously protected. Thou thy pity let me claim. It was thy command, ah, me. I should live here thus disguised. Striving, as thy words advised. Hiding all my jealousy. To avoid Astolfo's sight. But he saw me, and though seeing. With Estrella, he, false being. Converse holds this very night. In a garden bower. The key. I have taken, and will show. Where, by entering, with a blow. Thou canst end my misery. Thus, then, daring, bold, and strong. Thou my honor wilt restore. Strike, and hesitate no more. Let his death revenge my wrong. Clotaldo, it is true, my inclination. Since thou first wert seen by me. Was to strive and do for thee. Be thy tears my attestation. 
all my life could do to serve thee. What I first was forced to press. Was that thou shouldst change thy dress. Less if chancing to observe thee. Masquerading like a page. By appearances so strong. Led astray, the duke might wrong. By a thought thy sex and age. Meanwhile various projects held me. In suspense, oft pondering o'er. How thy honour to restore. Though, thy honour so compelled me. I Astolfo's life should take. Wild design that soon took wing. Yet, as he was not my king. It no terror could awake. I his death was seeking, when. Sigismund with vengeful aim. Sought for mine. Astolfo came. And despising what most men. Would a desperate peril deem. Stood in my defence, his bearing. Nigh to rashness in its daring. Showed a valour most extreme. How then, think, could I, whose breath. Is his gift, in murderous strife. For his giving me my life. Strive in turn to give him death. And thus, grateful, yet aggrieved. By two opposite feelings driven. Seeing it to thee have given. And from him have it received. Doubting this, and that believing. Half revenging, half forgiving. If to thee I'm drawn by giving. I to him am by receiving. Thus bewildered and beset. Vainly seeks my love away. Since I have a debt to pay. Where I must exact a debt. Rosara, it is settled, I believe. As all men of spirit know. That, tis glorious to bestow. But a meanness to receive. Well, admitting this to be. Then thy thanks should not be his. Even supposing that he is. One who gave thy life to thee. As the gift of life was thine. And from him the taking came. In this case the act was shame. And a glorious act in mine. Thus by him thou art aggrieved. And by me even complimented. Since to me thou hast presented. What from him thou hast received. Then all hesitation leaving. Thou to guard my fame shouldst fly. Since my honour is as high. As is giving to receiving. Clotaldo, thou it seems a generous fever. In a noble heart to give. Still an equal fire may live. In the heart of the receiver. Heartlessness is something hateful. I would boast a liberal name. Thus I put my highest claim. In the fact of being grateful. Then to me that title leave. Gentle birth breeds gentleness. For the honor is no less. To bestow than to receive. Rosara, I received my life from thee. But for thee I now were dead. Still it was thyself that said. No insulted life could be. Called a life, on that I stand. Not have I received from thee. For the life no life could be. That was given me by thy hand. But if thou wouldst first be just. Ere being generous in this way. As I heard thyself once say. Thou will give me life I trust. Which thou hast not yet, and thus. Giving will enhance thee more. For if liberal before. Thou wilt then be generous. Clotaldo, conquered by thy argument. Liberal I first will be. I, Rosara, will to thee. All my property present. In a convent live, by me. Has the plan been weighed some time. For escaping from a crime. Thou wilt there find sanctuary. For so many ills present them. Through the land on every side. That being nobly born, my pride. Is to strive and not augment them. By the choice that I have made. Loyal to the land I'll be. I am liberal with thee. And Astolfo's debt is paid. Choose then, nay, let honor, rather. Choose for thee, and for us too. For, by heaven. I could not do. More for thee were I thy father. Rosara, were that supposition true. I might strive and bear this blow. But not being my father, no. 
Clotaldo, what then dost thou mean to do? Rosara, kill the duke. Clotaldo, a gentle dame. Who no father's name doth know. Can she so much valor show? Rosara, yes. Clotaldo, what drives thee on? Rosara, my fame. Clotaldo, think that in the duke thou ltc. Rosara, honor all my wrath doth rouse. Clotaldo, soon thy king, Estrella's spouse. Rosara, no, by heaven. It must not be. Clotaldo, it is madness. Rosara, yes, I see it. Clotaldo, conquer it. Rosara, I can't overthrow it. Clotaldo, it will cost thee. Rosara, yes, I know it. Clotaldo, life and honor. Rosara, well, so be it. Clotaldo, what wouldst have? Rosara, my death. Clotaldo, take care. It is spite. Rosara, tis honor's cure. Clotaldo, tis wild fire. Rosara, that will endure. Clotaldo, it is frenzy. Rosara, rage, despair. Clotaldo, can there then be nothing done? This blind rage to let pass by? Rosara, no. Clotaldo, and who will help thee? Rosara, I. Clotaldo, is there then no remedy? Rosara, none. Clotaldo, think of other means whereby. Rosara, other means would seal my fate. Exit. Clotaldo, if tis so, then, daughter, wait. For together we shall die. Exit. Scene 9. The Open Plain. Sigismund, clothed in skins, soldiers marching. Claren. Drums are heard. Sigismund, if Rome could see me on this day. Amid the triumphs of its early sway. Oh, with what strange delight. It would have seen so singular a sight. Its mighty armies led. By one who was a savage wild beast bred. Whose courage soars so high. That even an easy conquest seems the sky. But let us lower our flight. My spirit, tis not thus we should invite. This doubtful dream to stay. Lest when I wake and it has passed away. I learn to my sad cost. A moment given, twas in a moment lost. Determined not to abuse it. The less will be my sorrow should I lose it. A trumpet sounds. Claren, upon a rapid steed. Excuse my painting it. I can't indeed. Resist the inspiration. Which seems a moving mass of all creation. Its body being the earth. The fire the soul that in its heart hath birth. Its foam the sea, its panting breath the air. Chaos confused at which I stand and stare. Since in its soul, foam, body, breath, to me. It is a monster made of fire, earth, air, and sea. Its color dapple gray. Speckled its skin, and flecked, as well it may. By the impatient spur its flank that dies. For lo! It doth not run, the meteor flies. As born upon the wind. A beauteous woman seeks thee. Sigismund, I'm struck blind. Claren, good God, it is Rosara, oh, the pain. Retires. Sigismund, heaven has restored her to my sight again. Scene 10. Rosara, in a light corslet, with sword and dagger. Sigismund, and soldiers. Rosara, noble-hearted Sigismund. Thou whose hidden light heroic. Issues from its night of shadows. To the great deeds of its morning. And as heaven's sublimest planet. From the white arms of Aurora. Back restores their beauteous color. To the wild flowers and the roses. And upon the seas and mountains. When India deemed with glory. Scatters light, diffuses splendor. Braids their foam, their hair makes golden. Thus thou dawnest on the world. Bright auspicious son of Poland. Who will help a hapless woman. 
she who at thy feet doth throw her. Help her, since she is unhappy. And a woman. Two good motives. Quite enough to move a man. Who of valor so doth boast him. Though even one would be sufficient. Though even one would be all potent. Thou hast seen me thrice already. Thrice thou hast not truly known me. For each time by different dresses. Was I strangely metamorphosed. First I seemed to thee a man. When within thy sad and somber. Cell thou sawest me, when thy life. Wild for me mine own misfortunes. As a woman next thou sawest me. Where the splendors of thy throne room. Vanished like a fleeting vision. Vain, phantasmal and abortive. The third time is now, when being. Something monstrous and abnormal. In a woman's dress thou seest me. With a warrior's arms adorned. And to pity and compassion. That thou mayst be moved more strongly. Listen to the sad succession. Of my tragical misfortunes. In the court of Muscovy. I was born of a noble mother. Who indeed must have been fair. Since unhappiness was her portion. Fond and two persuading eyes. Fixed on her, a traitor lover. Whom, not knowing, I don't name. Though mine own worth hath informed me. What was his, for being his image. I sometimes regret that fortune. Made me not a pagan born. That I might. In my wild folly. Think he must have been some god. Such as he was, who in golden. Shower wooed Danae, or as swan. Leda loved, as bull, Europa. When I thought to lengthen out. Citing these perfidious stories. My discourse, I find already. That I have succinctly told thee. How my mother, being persuaded. By the flatteries of love's homage. Was a fair as any fair. And unfortunate as all are. That ridiculous excuse. Of a plighted husband's promise. So misled her, that even yet. The remembrance brings her sorrow. For that traitor, that Aeneas. Flying from his Troy, forgot there. Or left after him his sword. By this sheath its blade is covered. But it shall be naked drawn. Ere this history is over. From this loosely fastened no. Which binds nothing, which ties nothing. Call it marriage, call it crime. Names its nature cannot alter. I was born, a perfect image. A true copy of my mother. In her loveliness, ah, no. In her miseries and misfortunes. Therefore there is little need. To say how the hapless daughter. Heiress of such scant good luck. Had her own peculiar portion. All that I will say to thee. Of myself is, that the robber. Of the trophies of my fame. Of the sweet spoils of my honor. Is a Stalfo. Ah. To name him. Stirs and rouses up the collar. Of the heart, a fitting effort. When an enemy's name is spoken. Yes, a Stalfo was that traitor. Who, forgetful of his promise. For when love has passed away. Even its memory is forgotten. Came to Poland. Hither called. From so sweet so proud a conquest. To be married to Australia. Of my setting sun the torchlight. Who'll believe that when one star. Oft unites two happy lovers. Now one star, Australia, comes. Two to tear from one another. I offended, I deceived. Sad remained remained astonished. Mad, half dead, remained myself. That's to say, in so much torment. That my heart was like a babble. Of confusion, hell, and horror. I resolving to be mute. For there are some pains and sorrows. That by feelings are expressed. Better than when words are spoken. I by silence spoke my pain. Till one day being with my mother. Violante, she, oh, heavens! Burst their prison, 
like a torrent. Forth they rushed from out my breast. Streaming wildly o'er each other. No embarrassment it gave me. To relate them, for the knowing. That the person we confide to. A like weakness must acknowledge. Gives as, twere to our confusion. A sweet soothing and a solace. For at times a bad example. Has its use. In fine, my sorrows. She with pity heard, relating. Even her own grief to console me. When he has himself been guilty. With what ease the judge condemneth. Knowing from her own experience. That, t'was idle, to slow moving. Leisure, to swift fleeting time. To entrust one's injured honor. She could not advise me better. As the cure of my misfortunes. Then to follow and compel him. By prodigious acts of boldness. To repay my honor's debt. And that such attempt might cost me. Less. My fortune wished that I. Should a man's strange dress put on me. She took down an ancient sword. Which is this I bear, the moment. Now draws nigh I must unsheath it. Since to her I gave that promise. When confiding in its marks. Thus she said, depart to Poland. And so manage that this steel. Shall be seen by the chief nobles. Of that land, for I have hope. That there may be one among them. Who may prove to thee a friend. An adviser and consoler. Well, in Poland I arrived. It is useless to inform thee. What thou knowest already, how. A wild steed resistless bore me. To thy cavern tower, wherein. Thou with wonder didst behold me. Let us pass too, how Clodaldo. Passionately my cause supported. How he asked my life of the king. Who to him that boon accorded. How discovering who I am. He persuaded me my proper. Dress to assume, and on Estrella. To attend as maid of honor. So to thwart Astolfo's love. And prevent the marriage contract. Let us, too, pass by, that here. Thou didst once again behold me. In a woman's dress, my form. Waking thus a twofold wonder. And approach the time, Clodaldo. Being convinced it was important. That should wed and reign together. Fair Estrella and Estolfo. Gainst my honor, me advised. To forego my rightful project. But, O oh valiant Sigismund. Seeing that the moment cometh. For thy vengeance, since heaven wishes. Thee today to burst the portals. Of thy narrow rustic cell. Where so long immured, thy body. Was to feeling a wild beast. Was to sufferance what the rock is. And that, gainst thy sire and country. Thou hast gallantly revolted. And tain arms, I come to assist thee. Intermingling the bright corslet. Of Minerva with the trappings. Of Diana. Thus enrobing. Silken stuff and shining steel. In a rare but rich adornment. On, then, on, undaunted champion. To us both it is important. To prevent and bring to naught. This engagement and betrothal. First to me, that he, my husband. Should not falsely wed another. Then to thee, that their two staffs. Being united, their joined forces. Should with overwhelming power. Leave our doubtful victory hopeless. Woman, I come here to urge thee. To repair my injured honor. And as man I come to rouse thee. Crown and scepter to recover. Woman I would wake thy pity. Since here at thy feet I throw me. And as man, my sword and person. In thy service I devote thee. But remember, if today. As a woman thou shouldst court me. I, as man, will give thee death. In the laudable upholding. Of my honor, since I am. In this strife of love, this contest. Woman my complaints to tell thee. And a man to guard my honor. Sigismund, 
aside, heavens. If it is true I dream. Memory then suspend thy office. For, tis vain to hope remembrance. Could retain so many objects. Help me, God. Or teach me how. All these numerous doubts to conquer. Or to cease to think of any. Who or tried such painful problems? If, twas but a dream, my grandeur. How then is it, at this moment? That this woman can refer me. To some facts that are notorious. Then, twas truth, and not a dream. But if it was truth, another. And no less confusion, how? Can my life be called improper? Speech a dream. So like to dreams. Are then all the world's chief glories. That the true are oft rejected. As the false, the false too often. Are mistaken for the true. Is there then, twixt one and the other. Such slight difference, that a question. May arise at any moment. Which is true or which is false. Are the original and the copy. So alike, that which is which. Off the doubtful mind must ponder. If, tis so, and if must vanish. As the shades of night at morning. All of majesty and power. All of grandeur and of glory. Let us learn at least to turn. To our profit the brief moment. That is given us. Since our joy. Lasteth while our dream lasts only. In my power Rosara stands. Thou, my heart, her charms adoreth. Let us seize then the occasion. Let love trample in its boldness. All the laws on which relying. She here at my feet has thrown her. Tis a dream. And since, tis so. Let us dream of joys, the sorrows. Will come soon enough hereafter. But with mine own words just spoken. Let me now confute myself. If it is a dream that mocks me. Who for human vanities. Would forego celestial glory. What past bliss is not a dream. Who has had his happy fortunes. Who hath said not to himself. As his memory ran o'er them. All I saw, beyond a doubt. Was a dream. If this exposeth. My delusion, if I know. That desire is but the glowing. Of a flame that turns to ashes. At the softest wind that bloweth. Let us seek then the eternal. The true fame that ne'er reposeth. Where the bliss is not a dream. Nor the crown a fleeting glory. Without honor is Rosara. But it is a prince's province. To give honor, not to take it. Then, by heaven. It is her honor. That for her I must win back. Ere this kingdom I can conquer. Let us fly then this temptation. To the soldiers. Tis too strong, to arms. March onward. For today I must give battle. Ere descending night, the golden. Sunbeams of expiring day. Berries in the dark green ocean. Rosara, dost thou thus, my lord, withdraw thee? What? Without a word being spoken. Does my pain deserve no pity? Does my grief so little move thee? Can it be, my lord, thou wilt not? Deign to hear, to look upon me. Dost thou even avert thy face? Sigismund, ah, Rosara, tis thy honor. That requires this harshness now. If my pity I would show thee. Yes, my voice does not respond. Tis my honor that respondeth. True I speak not, for I wish. That my actions should speak for me. Thee I do not look on, no. For, alas. It is of moment. That he must not see thy beauty. Who is pledged to see thy honor. Exit followed by the soldiers. Rosara, what enigmas, O ye skies! After many a sigh and tear. Thus in doubt to leave me here. With equivocal replies. Scene 11. Claren and Rosara. Claren, madam, is it visiting hour? 
Rosara, welcome, Claren, where have you been? Claren, only four stout walls between. In an old enchanted tower. Death was on the cards for me. But amid the sudden strife. Ere the last trump came, my life. Won the trick and I got free. I ne'er hope to sound again. Rosara, why? Claren, because alone I know. Who you are, and this being so. Learn, Claudaldo is. This strain. Puts me out. Drums are heard. Rosara, what can it be? Claren, from the citadel at hand. Leaguered round, an armed band. As to certain victory. Sallies forth with flags unfurled. Rosara, gainst Prince Sigismund. And I. Coward that I am, not by. To surprise and awe the world. When with so much cruelty. Each on each the two hosts spring. Exit. Scene 12. Claren, and soldiers within. Voices of some, live, long live our victor king. Voices of others, live, long live our liberty. Claren, live, long live the two, I say. Me it matters and not a pin. Which doth lose or which doth win. If I can keep out of the way. So aside here I will go. Acting like a prudent hero. Even as the Emperor Nero. Took things coolly long ago. Or if care I cannot shun. Let it, bout mine own self be. Yes, here hidden I can see. All the fighting and the fun. What a cozy place I spy. Mid the rock there. So secure. Death can't find me out I'm sure. Then a fig for death I say. Conceals himself, drums beat and the sound of arms is heard. Scene 13. Basilius, Clotaldo, Astolfo, flying. Claren concealed. Basilius, hapless king. Disastrous reign. Outraged father. Guilty son. Clotaldo, see thy vanquished forces run. In a panic o'er the plain. Astolfo, and the rebel conquerors stay. Proud, defiant. Basilius, tis decreed. Those are loyal who succeed. Rebels those who lose the day. Let us then, Claudaldo, flee. Since the victory he hath won. From a proud and cruel son. Shots are fired within, and Claren falls wounded from his hiding place. Claren, heaven protect me. Astolfo, who can be? This last victim of the fight. Who is struck down in the retreat? Falls here bleeding at our feet? Claren, I am an unlucky wight. Who to shun death's fearful face? Found the thing I would forget. Flying from him, him I've met. For there is no secret place. Hid from death. And therefore I. This conclusion hold as clear. He escapes best who goes more near. He dies first who first doth fly. Then return, return and be. In the bloody conflict lost. Where the battle rages most. There is more security. Then in hills how desolate. Since no safety can there be. Gainst the force of destiny. And the inclemency of fate. Therefore, tis in vain thou fliest. From the death thou drawst more nigh. Oh, take heed for thou must die. If it is God's will thou deest. Falls within. Basilius, oh, take heed for thou must die. If it is God's will thou deest. With what eloquence, O oh heaven. Does this body that here leath. Through the red mouth of a wound. To profoundest thoughts entice us. From our ignorance and our error. The red current as it glitteth. Is a bloody tongue that teaches. All man's diligence is idle. When against a greater power. And a higher cause it striveth. Thus with me, gainst strife and murder. When I thought I had provided. I but brought upon my country. All the ills I would have hindered. Clotaldo, though, my lord, 
fate knoweth well. Every path, and quickly findeth. Whom it seeks. Yet still it strikes me. Tis not Christian-like to say. Gainst its rage that not suffices. That is wrong, a prudent man. Even o'er fate victorious rises. And if thou art not preserved. From the ills that have surprised thee. From worse ills thyself preserve. Astolfo, sire, Clodaldo doth address thee. As a cautious, prudent man. Whose experience time hath ripened. I as a bold youth would speak. Yonder, having lost its rider. I behold a noble steed. Wandering reinless and unbridled. Mount and fly with him while I. Guard the open path behind thee. Basilius, if it is God's will I die. Or if death for me here leath. As in ambush, face to face. I will meet it and defy it. Scene 14. Sigismund, Estrella, Rosara, Soldiers, Attendants, Basilius. Astolfo, and Clotaldo. A soldier, mid the thickets of the mountain. Neath these dark boughs so united. The king hides. Sigismund, pursue him then. Leave no single shrub unrifled. Nothing must escape your search. Not a plant, and not a pine tree. Clotaldo, fly, my lord. Basilius, and wherefore fly? Astolfo, come. Basilius, Astolfo, I'm decided. Clotaldo, what to do? Basilius, to try, Clodaldo. One sole remedy that serveth. To Sigismund. If tis me thou art he seeking, prince. At thy feet behold me lying. Kneeling. Let thy carpet be these hairs. Which the snows of age have whitened. Tread upon my neck, and trample. On my crown, in base defilement. Treat me with all disrespect. Let thy deadliest vengeance strike me. Through my honor. As thy slave. Make me serve thee, and in spite of. All precautions let fate be. Let heaven keep the word it plighted. Sigismund, princes of the court of Poland. Who such numerous surprises. Have astonished seen, attend. For it is your prince invites ye. That which heaven has once determined. That which God's eternal finger. Has upon the azure tablets. Of the sky sublimely written. Those transparent sheets of sapphire. Superscribed with golden ciphers. Ne'er deceive, and never lie. The deceiver and the liar. Is he who to use them badly. In a wrongful sense defines them. Thus, my father, who is present. To protect him from the wildness. Of my nature, made of me. A fierce brute, a human wild beast. So that I, who from my birth. From the noble blood that trickles. Through my veins, my generous nature. And my liberal condition. Might have proved a docile child. And so grew, it was sufficient. By so strange an education. By so wild a course of living. To have made my manners wild. What a method to refine them. If to any man, t'was said. It is fated that some wild beast. Will destroy you, would it be. Wise to wake a sleeping tiger. As the remedy of the ill. If, t'were said, this sword here hidden. In its sheath, which thou dost wear. Is the one for doomed to kill thee. Vain precaution it would be. To preserve the threatened victim. Bear to point it at his breast. If, t'were said, these waves that ripple. Calmly here for thee will build. Foam white sepulchres of silver. Wrong it were to trust the sea. When its haughty breast is lifted. Into mountain heights of snow. Into hills of curling crystal. Well, this very thing has happened. Unto him, who feared a wild beast. And awoke him while he slept. Or who drew a sharp sword hidden. Naked forth, or dared the sea. When t'was roused by raging whirlwinds. 
and though my fierce nature, hear me, was as, twere the sleeping tiger, a sheathed sword my innate rage, and my wrath a quiet ripple, fate should not be forced by means, so unjust and so vindictive, for they but excite it more, and thus he who would be victor, o'er his fortune, must succeed by wise prudence and self-strictness. Not before an evil cometh. Can it rightly be resisted? Even by him who hath foreseen it. For although, the facts admitted. By an humble resignation. It is possible to diminish. Its effects, it first must happen. And by no means can be hindered. Let it serve as an example. This strange sight, this most surprising. Spectacle, this fear, this horror. This great prodigy. For none higher. Error was worked than this we see. After years of vain contriving. Prostrate at my feet a father. And a mighty king submitted. This the sentence of high heaven. Which he did his best to hinder. He could not prevent. Can I. Who in valor and in science. Who in years am so inferior? It avert. My lord, forgive me. To the king. Rise, sir, let me clasp thy hand. For since heaven has now apprised thee. That thy mode of counteracting. Its decree was wrong, a willing. Sacrifice to thy revenge. Let my prostrate neck be given. Basilius, son, this noble act of thine. In my heart of hearts reviveth. All my love, thou art he there reborn. Thou art prince, the bay that bindeth. Hero's brows, the palm, be thine. Let the crown thine own deeds give thee. All, long live Sigismund our king. Sigismund, though my sword must wait a little. Ere great victories it can gain. I today will win the highest. The most glorious, o'er myself. Give, Astolfo, give your plighted. Hand here to Rosara, since. It is due and I require it. Astolfo, though, tis true I owe the debt. Still, tis needful to consider. That she knows not who she is. It were infamous, a stigma. On my name to wed a woman. Clotaldo, stay, Astolfo, do not finish. For Rosara is as noble. As yourself. My sword will write her. In the field against the world. She's my daughter, that's sufficient. Astolfo, what do you say? Clotaldo, until I saw her. To a noble spouse united. I her birth would not reveal. It were now a long recital. But the sum is, she's my child. Astolfo, that being so, the word I've plighted. I will keep. Sigismund, and that Estrella. May not now be left afflicted. Seeing she has lost a prince. Of such valor and distinction. I propose from mine own hand. As a husband one to give her. Who, if he does not exceed. Him in worth, perhaps may rival. Give to me thy hand. Estrella. I gain. By an honor so distinguished. Sigismund, to Clodaldo, who so truly. Serve my father, I can give him. But these open arms wherein. He will find water he wishes. A soldier, if thou honorayest those who serve thee. Thus, to me the first beginner. Of the tumult through the land. Who from out the tower, thy prison. Drew thee forth, what wilt thou give? Sigismund, just that tower, and that you issue. Never from it until death. I will have you guarded strictly. For the traitor is not needed. Once the treason is committed. Basilius, so much wisdom makes one wonder. Astolfo, what a change in his condition. Rosara, how discreet. How calm. How prudent. Sigismund, why this wonder, these surprises? If my teacher was a dream. And amid my new aspirings. 
I am fearful I may wake. And once more a prisoner find me. In my cell. But should I not? Even to dream it is sufficient. For I thus have come to know. That at last all human blisses. Pass and vanish as a dream. And the time that may be given me. I henceforth would turn to gain. Asking for our faults forgiveness. Since to generous, noble hearts. It is natural to forgive them.